My fellow sheep, election season is upon us. Are you one of the 12% of Americans who still approves of our government? Then we need your help to force the other 88% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? By only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CATMUF, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CATMUF. Because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom. Welcome to the 158th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a Bipcot No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at Bipcot.org. All right, so we're back. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, we are uh, <laughs> We are back. This is Jeremy, obviously, and uh, I still have Shane with me in person. Hello. Hey, what's up? And uh, we are still at the Midwest Peace, the sixth annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest here in Delton, Michigan. Uh, it's actually still Sunday. We, uh, we recorded uh, quite a long episode before, and, uh, well, a bunch of people who promised us they were going to show up never did. So we're giving them a second chance and trying to bring in some more people because, well, we meant to do this all weekend long, but, you know, as I said last show, a lot of things got in the way. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, what's up, Shane? How have you been since the last time we talked, man? It's been, well, it's it been like, like an hour, but I've had a shower and I feel fresh and clean. I, I, yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. I finally got my shower too, so I feel almost human. It's nice. It's quite nice. Um, but yeah, so it's good to be back. And we have a couple of people on the mic already. Well, Shane Radliff, I don't think he even moved. I don't, I don't think he's moved since the show, actually. I just realized that he's still in his chair over here. What's up, hey, Shane? I, I moved a little bit. I did. I moved a little bit. But yeah, I've been here quite a bit. So, And uh, we have somebody else on the mic who swears she's not going to talk, but we're going to make her. <laughs> um, coercion. Yes, coercion. <laughs> What's up, Miriam? Hi. Hi. Oh, she said, she said a word. We're so proud. Yeah. Mi- Mi- Miriam was uh, ended up organizing a lot of the stuff here, even though that wasn't supposed to be her job. She's been here. She's been here. As lo- she's been here longer than Shane and I have. <laughs> True. Yes. How, how have you been? Ha- how, how has how's been your experience here, been Miriam? How, have you been having so much fun? <laughs> I've been having a ton of fun, um, but yes, unforeseen circumstances um, led to a little bit more work than anticipated. But it was worth it for everyone to be so happy and enjoying themselves so much here at the fest. Well, uh, I, I, for one, have been enjoying myself at the fest, and uh, maybe a little too much, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway, we uh, we're we're awaiting the, we we are awaiting the arrival of some more individuals, but um, I don't know what uh, what were we talking about last time? Oh, we talked about the we talked we ended up talking about vinyl a lot, didn't we? Vans, vans, vanarchy, man. yeah. vanarchy. It's good stuff, man. We, uh, I don't know if we're going to get a Fiends episode tonight now. I mean, I'm getting kind of worried. <laughs> We've, uh, this has been quite a weekend though, because now, uh, now we have poor Brett Vanat is sitting down on the other side of the campgrounds with another one of the organizers who also said he might show up and uh, join us for a little while, Joe, uh, Joe Mutard, who we spoke about earlier. Who, uh, sp- yeah, I think we mentioned him earlier, who we've had on the show before, um, is now trying to fix Brett, Brett's uh, brakes on, the, on his vehicle. <laughs> so this this could go really smoothly, or this could be an all-night project, and uh, uh, I kind of hate to see what's going to happen, but yeah. These are the kind of things that happen when you come out here. Although, 
I, we can't really blame the fast, can we? I mean, Brett. <laughs> well, I mean, Brett does, had just recently driven across the entire country, <laughs> all the way out to LA a and back, and uh, also went to Pittsburgh back and forth a couple times. Maybe he should have been more careful. Maybe he should have the car checked out. Yeah, I got to look at those brake pads. They were pretty glazed over. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not really one to talk, actually, because I kept saying before uh, before I headed out this way that I really should take the car in the shop and uh, make sure it's ready to take the whole trip, and uh, I never did, so whatever. I'll be fine, I'm sure, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least for the first part of the trip, because, you know, we'll head out to Ben's house, and at the very least, I'll have you caravanning with me, Shane, maybe, uh, maybe some other yeah. people, since... Uh, Ben was nice enough to say that we could uh, we could bring a couple of friends. We'll have a big old party. Yeah, an open invitation. Yeah, man, spectacular. And then uh, we'll go hang out with Derek and Shane on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, that'll be my third time in the past week at a Liberate Your Mind uh, event. Right on. <laughs> third fucking time. Well, it's gonna be great. Does your mind feel more liberated now? Oh, it does. Just kicking it with Derek Bros and those those folks has been just incredible. Yeah. Coolest, chillest people. Mm -hmm. They seem pretty chill. I really didn't talk to them much. I never even actually spoke to Derek. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I've never actually been to a Liberate Your Mind event because I didn't really pay attention to any of the things they were doing while they're here. Except listen to the music last night. That was that was kick-ass. Oh, yeah. The live music that yeah. they brought with them. Uh, so Below is very nice. Uh, I was uh, really digging it. Yeah, what kind of music was that? You said something about it last night. I forgot already. Well, I think they do some reggae, but it was uh, seemed like kind of some ambient trance, like uh, looped samples and stuff. It was really nice. Yeah, I, I didn't. We, we were sitting there chilling, and I, I think I said in the last show that there, you know, there may or may not have been psilocybin involved last night. <laughs> and uh, for for quite a few of us, actually, possibly all four of us on the mic at the moment, <laughs> maybe not. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, we were chilling for quite a while listening to that stuff, and uh, it was like at hours before you before I said something, and you're like, "Oh yeah, it's live." And I'm like, "Wait, wait, what?" <laughs> I thought somebody had their like their you know the big boombox, or, or maybe it was or, or maybe oh no, I knew it wasn't Paradise's setup. Jason Paradise, who who also said he would join us tonight, uh, who was uh, one of Jason's co-hosts on the uh, what Liberty Under Attack. Jesus, I almost forgot the name of your, one of your podcasts. Damn it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I know it was in his system because he had his system set up down at the Anarchy Ball last night, right? So, yeah. Oh, actually, no. By that time, he had packed it up. I'm sure because yeah, that was late night. I don't know. You lose track of time up here in Michigan, especially when you come from where I come from, because like the, it stays so much later here, so much longer. Yeah. So, like right now, we're recording. It's already almost quarter to ten, and it looks like even in the, even the summer when we just passed the longest day of the year, right? That's what the summer solstice the solstice, is. solstice, yeah, on the 21st. Yeah, so even though we just passed that, even though I wasn't in New York, I'm pretty sure that by this time, it's already, you know, pretty black. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah. it's, kind of, it's kind of freaky when you deal with this out here. I, I never have. That's why with last year when I brought my kids, I ended up having, uh, they ended up staying up to like midnight almost every night when they're normally in bed by 10. <laughs> yeah. Because I would lose track of time, and it'd be like, "Oh, it's still light out. We got time. Don't worry about it." And then all of a sudden, it's like, "Oh, we need to eat dinner. Crap! It's nine thirty. What the hell happened to the day?" I was just really glad to have some live music this time. It's kind of been a little bit of a dream of mine to have some more live music here at the fest, and we kind of had that with So Below, and I was dancing to it, and I was really, really digging it. Yeah, I, I would have joined you in that, except I'm a white boy with no rhythm, so I usually takes me. I have to be extremely drunk to just not not care at all. Um, and you couldn't leave the cave. Yes, yes, this, this is true. This is true. There was uh, cre we created. I created a nice cave here, and uh, in, in my little corner of the campground. Since uh, since we got here so early, we we really had our pick of the place. Yeah, there's a little cove. Set up our own little chocolate like community. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little cove in the uh, I think this northwest corner. What did you call me, sir? <laughs> There's a little cove in the northwest corner of uh, the Spontaneous Order area, and um, Jeremy kind of staked that area out, put his canopy up, and that's where we're sitting now. And it is kind of like a little cave back here. Yeah, it's nice, especially at night because there's you know the tree. The, I got my canopy that up. Dome the... kaleidoscope. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the wonders of uh, special substances. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this was uh, this was this was nice to be down here because uh, you know I'm I'm near all the action, but because uh, 
I don't know. I mean, you said you think there's about 100 people here. It seems like it just seems like there's so much less at times. And other times it did seem like there was more. But it was never too yeah. loud, despite what that angry woman said at 3 o'clock in the other morning. Uh, I thought, uh, well, actually, granted that night, Jason did that. The music cranked up pretty loudly. But um, I was going somewhere before with something about my kids, and now I forget. But anyway. Um, oh, yeah, the whole thing about them staying up late. Yeah, well, you know, these things happen. And uh, that's why I stay up so late around here. But I should probably get some sleep tonight. That's probably a good idea, right? <laughs> Are you supposed to do that at the end of these trips? <laughs> so you actually have the energy to drive places? Well, yeah, it depends on the, the length of the drive. Oh, home. actually, yeah, we're not going that far tomorrow, right? How, how long is hours? How, yeah, okay. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can stay up all night. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. And you're only going to be like, what, a half hour from... Cincinnati, so I, I believe so. So you have a really short drive on Tuesday. Well, yeah, yeah, like I said, that's why I said we'd come out with we come hang out with you on Tuesday since uh, Ben's busy. We'll go hang out with you during yeah. the day, and, right on. Uh, yeah, and then go back there tonight, and then we'll liberate your mind some more. Well, yeah, and like I said, I I could finally liberate my mind. I've I've never officially done so. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I so I've, li- I've liberated my mind three times, three times more than all of you. <laughs> 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 Always got to be a fucking one upper, man. Jesus, why did we bring you back again? What the hell? It's not a competition, guys. This is what happens when you don't just kick people out of your tent when you go someplace. <laughs> Let's go take a shower before. I should have told everybody just get out. We'll we'll, we'll reset when we get back. But no. Oh man. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I'm I'm going to be sad to see the end of the fest. It's always sad. Yeah. You know? Well, 2018 was a good one, I think. I really enjoyed myself. I uh, yeah, I, I I like you know, like I said, I've I've definitely obviously missed the kids. It was really fun having them here last year, and I, I wish they were here. Well, largely missed they were here last night. Definitely would not have happened had they been here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that would have been a shame. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, the, the Pete, some of you know, so, some some of the uh, long the mainstays, of course, were not here. Um, not that we care about all of them, but I did kind of miss James. I have to say, yeah, he's. Uh, we uh, had some lanyards made up, and we had uh, white lettering on black and uh, yellow lettering on black that Miriam had made, and uh, the fest committee made. Yeah, and uh, we actually uh, took one of the white ones and colored it in the letters in with red. In anticipation of James' arrival. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> so we missed you, James. Yeah, it's Mr. James Weeks, who, of course, we have had on the show before. And uh, it's just, uh, he's, he's a very controversial figure in our, in, in our circles. But uh, I, I love the guy. I mean, I disagree with him vehemently about a lot of things. Uh, I, I listen to his new podcast. Uh, podcast titles are Spook. And I constantly am yelling at, well, a lot of his guests, because he has a lot of people you know from the leftist persuasion <laughs> and i yell at him all the time too but i, I love the guy he's so uh he, he's a lot of fun to hang out with and of course his his laugh is one of those things that he, he either grates on you immediately or it's a, or you realize that it's infectious it's contagious laugh it really is yeah. like it was it was so it was so hard to do podcasts with him because i mean you know we had him on we had him on our show on the show and then obviously he was a freedom fiend for a while so i did a bunch of shows with him there uh and he's a lowbird too so i did i think i did one lowbirds episode with him um we know it's it, just for the apple pie what? <laughs> well, yeah, that is a plus. He, well, no, see, he yelled at me the last time I said anything about that, but uh, he may have a source for uh, some delicious apple pie drink that uh, may or may not contain alcohol. And uh, yes, it's it's wonderful, but I, I do I do actually enjoy hanging out with the guy because, like I said, I, I find his laugh infectious, and I can't help but laughing when I'm around. I can't Holy help but laugh when I'm around him. Look who's walking up here. Big belly, big beard. What? Oh, hey, that's... Oh, look at that. Wow. We actually have oh we actually have, we, we have a real celebrity guest showing up. Not a, not a, just us <laughs> schlubs over here and Shane who we can't seem to get rid of because he just won't get out of his seat. <laughs> prof Prof CJ has uh, joined joined the party uh, or may join the party. 
What's that? I made it over eventually. Yeah, I saw. I I, had, I I invited Prof CJ to come by before, and he was so great. She said, sure, sure, sure. And, of course, shortly thereafter, Brett Fanat came sneaking up. And, well, <laughs> we all know that I am no Brett Fanat, so. <laughs> and then right after that, then Lou was feeding me. Oh, well, that of course. Back. I understand, and Lou. I had to talk to my wife on the phone. Oh, that's. I'm on my way back over here, and then I get into a, into a long conversation with Nick Hazleton. Uh, oh, see, and that's even worse because Nick was just here, and Nick knows very well that we were supposed to have. He's actually, supposed to be back here to come on too. He actually told me to come back. You know, that, you, that you were still set up over here. Well, like what? Immediately after that, we fell into a conversation before I before I could uh, vacate the premises. All right. Well, why don't, if 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 you're back and you, if you don't mind, why don't, why don't you come sit down for a while? Well, uh, may, oh yeah, we gotta have to get up, Mister. I got Miriam. We gotta gotta give the man a seat. It's okay. She didn't really want to be on anyway. Well, I, you know what? I'm so proud of you, though. Thank you for actually saying something while you were on the microphone. Yes, more than one word. <laughs> yes, thank you. Very impressed. So, yes, we we are now joined by CJ from the yeah. Dangerous History Podcast, yeah. who we, we've actually had as a guest on our show before. Twice, I think. Yeah, actually, twice. Yeah, yeah at least twice. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, your mic is out for some reason. Am I on now? There we go, yes. Okay, yeah, it was off. Hey, so thanks, man. How, how you doing? How are you? Good, good. Been having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a cool, uh, you know, a, a, a cool a cool event. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you back because you know you, you missed last year. It was uh, it was uh, it was it was a little it was a little more lonely, but you know, it's good, it's good to have you back. <laughs> and uh, you of course you of course came here and gave a presentation, right? Your, uh... Yes, I did earlier today, uh, one one o'clock ish, I think it was. <laughs> Somewhere uh, around there. I, great, I, I, great talk, man. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was I was wondering how I was going to go over. You know, it's a little bit of a kind of a kind of a different different thing for me. Um, you know, I didn't just get up there and go. Oh, I'm going to spend an hour talking about uh, Calvin Coolidge. You know, or <laughs> some other history tidbit. Yeah, you want, do you want to tell our, our our audience what you were talking about today? What you uh, uh, what, the, what you brought to the table? Yeah, the topic was avoiding intellectual inbreeding, and so. What I was trying to do was sort of explain what I meant by that, what the problems are with with that happening, and then what I see as some of the benefits of avoiding that, and then just some suggestions of maybe ways to try to minimize it. You know, and by by intellectual inbreeding, I mean getting into um, an, an echo chamber situation of you're only ever reading, listening to, you know, absorbing content just from people who agree with you like 90 to 100% on everything. Sure. Um, and it's, you know, something that we all have a natural tendency to kind of go towards if we just go on autopilot. Like a confirmation bias? Yes. Yes, that's a, that's a, that's a big, big part of what's going on. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things that, that it, it takes some conscious effort sometimes to remind yourself like eh, it's probably good if i don't only just listen to and engage with people who are a hundred percent on the same page as me on everything um yeah that's uh i mean i i agree that's it's, it's funny we we were talking about this the other night i can't remember if we were recording a show or we were just having a conversation about this about the fact that it seems that there's more and more people that seem to be headed in that direction, which is a good thing, I think. I mean, I, I know a lot of people aren't, but at least within our communities, we come across more and more people that are, are more focused on, on, just, on solutions and realizing, you know what? We can't just, you know, we have to branch out. I mean, I'm one of them. I, I was very rigid about, you know, not talking to pretty much anybody on the left for a long time mm -hmm. and, uh, and, that, and, not, and not trying to gain anything from them. And I realized, well, that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, now I try to listen to everybody and I've actually gained a lot more insight. And, yeah. and anybody in, in, in any uh, ideology who is too rigid, I, t I tend to stay away more from them now <laughs> because I don't yeah. gain much from them, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it seems like one of the things that, that will will lead it lead somebody to be more ideologically rigid and more kind of you know isolated within their own little tribe is if if you see the the solutions to the problems in a more top down way like if you see it more as okay we need to get xyz party and candidates in office and get them to institute these top down you know, reforms, these amendments, these, you know, undo these laws, get rid of the Federal right. Reserve from the top. If that's how you think about 
the the way to deal with with the problems that we identify then you're going to tend to see things in a much more rigid way as as far as the approach of of how to deal with it so um whereas if you see things more in a bottom-up way uh, uh, you, you think more about you know individual and kind of local ways of of dealing with things starting with just becoming more educated in the true sense of the word um, that if you, if you see the, the solution of the problem more that way, then I think it leads you to be a little bit more open-minded and a little bit more kind of flexible and all that sort of thing. Well, sure. That makes sense because, well, that every, every system, every system currently is top down. So if, you know, if, if you're looking at it from a different perspective, you have to be, you have to be thinking differently than the rest of the people. Cause otherwise, you yeah. know, otherwise it's, 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 it's obviously a new experience for most people because that's all you've ever been taught. Right. Sure. Everything's always, even from the, the way the family structure has kind of been built around too. Everything just seems to be top down, top down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, if you're thinking that way, you kind of have your your prepackaged solution, and then when you're encountering somebody who maybe agrees with you on a fair amount of stuff, but not on on, on every last thing, then instead of saying, "Hey, look, we actually have this common ground. Maybe we can like usefully learn some stuff from each other, and maybe even collaborate on something or whatever," instead you look at it as, you know, "Oh, you're you're bad because." You know, you're 10 degrees off from my exact program that I know we're going to get the right guy in to institute one of these days. And, yeah. you know, good luck with all that. <laughs> well, yes, I agree. I'm sure Shane would, too. You know, and I, I know how big of a fan you are of uh, political cru crusading right there, uh, Radliff. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm one of the uh, harshest folks on uh, political crusading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's not kind. <laughs> it sounds so sincere. <laughs> Yeah, but no, but like I said, I I I, to I, I, I totally agree with that because yeah, I've I mean myself, I I've I, I went from being rather rigid about this to f to finding I actually prefer now to work with more people that I don't agree with on a lot more things because we're we're able to you know we we kind of cut out we've decided to cut out all that bullshit and not argue not even bother arguing about this stuff and mm -hmm. only focus on the stuff that we do agree on, which you know takes a lot less energy. Oh, well, we could yeah. we rather we can focus that, that rather we could focus the same energy on on one particular thing, and we actually get more accomplished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and it's true even of of something like, for example, um, if you're collaborating with someone on creating content, you know, if you're, you're recording an episode of a podcast or you're you're filming, you know, a, a YouTube video or whatever with another person, it's like if I have someone on on my podcast as a guest who has some really neat insights that I want to share with my listeners, but they don't share my ideology 100%, what's going to be more valuable, right? If I spend the time I have to talk to this person trying to convince them that I'm totally right about the stuff we disagree on, or is it going to probably produce a much more pleasant and useful uh, and educational podcast episode if instead we focus on, all right, what does this person bring to the table uh, that my listeners will probably enjoy... <coughs> you know and benefit from so oh you know, even even collaborating in that sense i, th I think it's better and, and i totally agree with you that it it's it's a it's a lot more like relaxed <laughs> way of of interacting with the world to not always see everything in adversarial and one, one of the things i mentioned in in my talk earlier is there's this temptation and i've fallen prey to it many many times uh to to see the world in manichaean terms you know that uh pure good versus pure evil us versus them and and to basically you know the the sith lord slash george w bush you know if you're if you're not 100 percent with us then you're 100 percent our enemy yeah right and, mm -hmm. and that, that i think that's a that's a very it's an easy thing to fall into i've i've fallen prey to it many times but it's not a good it's not a good road to go down it's it's not a productive not a productive place oh. so oh yeah uh, absolutely I mean, I, I too, I've, you know, I, I, I try to fall to it less, but yeah, it, it happens, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you get caught up in stuff and, uh, you know, no matter, I mean, I, 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 I'm so, I'm one of those idiots who always prides myself on being logical, but I fall, you know, I fall prey to stupid emotional arguments all the time and then, okay, right. and then realize later it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing it again. You got to stop that. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And sometimes people who are, who are good at making rational or at least rational sounding arguments, 
are are more prone to this whole idea of of how to, how to put this people who who are better at making rational sounding arguments that skill then is used by themselves against themselves <laughs> to come up with very skillful ap- apologetics gymnastics uh sort of justifications of beliefs they hold that are irrational so they're they're more skillful at justifying their stupid beliefs <laughs> because they're smarter if that, if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it absolutely yeah. does. Because uh, unfortunately, that's what I saw happen with a lot of my uh, former friends who mm-hmm. kind of drifted off with the whole election thing, and we either went down the alt right path or took the took you know Walter Block's tr- uh, libertarians for Trump a little too far. Yeah. Um, those are the ones that I you know I saw that in the. Mo- I mean, obviously, it's it's you know my anecdotal evidence there, but that's what I saw the most was th- those folks. To- and again, it it baffled me for a while, but that it, what you just said makes perfect sense. It's like yeah, of course, because they're always focused on the logic, so they're just gonna keep they're gonna keep pounding it and. And uh, they, they've already, you know, I, I've I tried to point out to a lot of these folks for a long time. They didn't want to listen to me because um, I know I fell into it where once I got to a certain point, you know, once I kind of figured out what was wrong with the state and whatnot and that I didn't, uh, didn't want to participate anymore and started referring to myself as an anarchist, uh, I kind of ended up in the uh, ANCAP camp. And uh, I thought I had all the answers, mm. and I was like, "Okay, great. Now I don't have to. I don't have to think anymore." Yeah. So I started to become very. Yeah. I started to become what now we now uh, a bunch of my friends that I jokingly refer to as absolute as an absolutarian, mm. where I was just like, "Everything. No, I have the answers. No, no, you're wrong. You, mm. There's like I can argue yeah. against you for anything. There's you know there's no point because you you're gonna lose. But um, and that's and then when I finally broke free of that and realized that that I wasn't working for me anymore. Mm. And then I saw I saw some other friends of mine just not, and then they fell into this trap. Yeah, that's exactly what a lot of them do. They uh, oh. they, they they hold these positions, and they still make those arguments that to the uneducated in these ways can sound can still actually sound persuasive. Sure, <laughs> they're just uh, yeah, they have these giant blind spots, and uh, it's just funny. Because uh, I, I point it out all the time. I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Aren't we? Aren't well? I used to say we, but now it's like, aren't you guys supposed to be the logical ones? How is it possible that you're just like, you know, you're just bouncing from fallacy to fallacy to fallacy without even realizing it, like without a hint of yeah. irony? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and not. I mean, j- just contradicting stuff. In in some cases, these these sorts of people, they contradict stuff that they said just a few years ago. You know, I'm sure you've you've observed people. You know, even just people you interact with online where in, in I don't know, 20, 10, 12, 14, they're like, politics is not the answer, voting's for suckers, blah, blah, blah. And then some of these people were like, <laughs> whoa, but Trump's different and he's going to save Western civilization yep, exactly. and all this outlandish stuff. It's like, really? Fell well, for the really? same old tricks again. It, it was that easy. And, and you know what? I'll say this, like, at least, because some of these people were people who... who had criticized supporting Ron Paul and, and said, you know, well, Ron Paul's not the not the solution. And it's like, eh, I don't necessarily think Ron Paul was the solution, but at least it's more plausible that he was than that Trump is. Right. I mean, you know, that there's 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 at least a giant difference there. And you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a non-voter, um, whatever. But you have, know. You can't, have you canceled your voter registration? Um, no. Although I am, I am registered as no party affiliation, and I don't, I don't ever go. And the the only reason that I I have it at all is to reduce my property taxes. Really, that has that has an impact. Yes, it, wow. it does okay, in wow. Florida. I have no idea how many other states have that. Oh, I don't but, think I don't, I don't think it's in New York because at least I've never heard of it. But that, that's that's actually that's actually a good reason for keeping it. I must say. I, yes, I, I, I have ju- not. I, 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 I have not heard that. I have not heard that brought up before. Okay. Yeah, Fair yeah. Enough. Florida's got something, and again, I have no idea how common this is in other states. Florida's got something called the homestead exemption for property tax, and basically, like if it's your permanent full time residence. And it's not like a vac- – because Florida has so many seasonal people who have, like, you know, winter homes and whatever. Right. But but if you're if it's your permanent full-time residence, you can fill out this little form. It's no big deal. Um, and you get this homestead exemption, which gives you a significant property tax cut. But uh, you actually do have to be registered to vote 
to fill out the thing. Uh, so okay. wow. that's the only reason I don't know. I have no idea where my voter, where my voter card is. <laughs> I've, I've never used it you know, since that <laughs> happened. Um, that's great. Well, like I said, that's, I, 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 I don't blame you. I mean, I know why he's going after that. Cause he's all big on, on getting people to cancel their voter registration, yeah, which, I, bad. which, which I, <laughs> no, no, I, pre- I appreciate that too. We, I mean, we've discussed this, unfortunately in New York, they make it like impossible to do this. Um, right. That was the, that was one of the States you had a problem figuring out how to do stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause they, they make it so, they make it so impossible. I've tried to track it down, but you, you actually have a very good reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if there was, you know, if there, if there was no impact on anything, um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to officially cancel it, um, and and I have noticed because I've been I've been registered different things at different points in my life, um, like when I first turned eighteen and registered to vote because it's what you do. I was a Republican because I was kind of like a, you know, from a from a right wing family basically, Same. and I was I was kind of like a republic a libertarian leaning Republican at that time I would say, and then eventually I changed from that to being registered as Libertarian Party on my voter registration. And um, and then eventually I just you know I almost didn't didn't renew it at all when I moved into my current house, but then I found out the property tax thing, and so I said, all right, well, I'll just do no party affiliation. And the one benefit I've found of that versus being registered for any party is I hardly get any of that stupid shit in the mail. <laughs> oh, that's actually see, I I don't think they have that option in New York, but I wish they did because that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, in, in Florida, it's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, it's sounding at least that it's not, I'm not registered as independent. I'm registered. It just says it's no, no party. Yeah. On, on my card, it said no party. And you know, I don't know. I just think that, I think that's kind of cool. And yeah, I get way less junk mail when elections are, are coming. I, I'll, I'll get like a few, if there's like some ballot initiative, that's kind of like not, you know, specifically a party or something, I'll maybe get like a stupid flyer about that. But you know, another, another, another side benefit of no party. <laughs> So CJ, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, uh, are you are you are you partaking in any direct action at this time? Um, since you're doing, since you uh, since politics seems out of the question for you. Um, d- direct action, in <clears throat> in what sense of the word? Um, not like the the leftist sense, but like, um, are you uh, you know doing any self sufficiency stuff or off grid homesteading or um, or um, a- any anything else like that? Not not to a huge extent. I mean, I I do. I do sort of like basic, basic prepping stuff, you know, a little bit of gardening, that kind of thing. Oh. Um, you know, do a little, a little cryptocurrency, but I'm not, I'm not uh, huge into that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see, I see my role as, as, as being like an on the grid sort of a person, right? Like the, the difference between. And I, and I don't mean this in terms of the violence and whatever, but the difference between, say, IRA and Sinn Féin, where, where Sinn Féin is like the, the above board, you know, political activism thing that's, you know, they follow all the laws, they're, they're not directly involved in anything illegal, whatever, um, but then they have the symbiotic relationship with, with the IRA who are, you know, doing the, the more kind of uh, clandestine sorts of stuff so I, I don't know i don't know if that's if that's a very satisfactory answer or not but yeah i mean it makes sense to me <laughs> to to a little extent but like i'm still i i i i i have sympathy with with like all the all the stuff you know that that you're doing and and the stuff um like you were talking about in, in your presentation which i i missed the first half of it but i caught the second half um it's very interesting stuff and i'm certainly open to some of that stuff um but also where I'm at now, I'm also kind of in the system. Sure, you know? sure, and it, just just kind of a, a square in that regard. <laughs> but um, well, no, that's there's nothing square about it because that actually, yeah. I mean, that makes sense because that actually fits right in with. Uh, I think I think it was mentioned before Ben Stone's book, uh, Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's kind of like the um, what, what you're describing is basically like the uh, what what he talks about in, in that sense is you know the above ground and the underground. Yeah, just, yeah, that's right. That's you know, right, some yeah. people have to be uh, some people have to be right. squeaky clean and and be part of society yep. and fit right in and and not and not even and and not even really associate um, or or even acknowledge in any positive way the actions of the uh, you know the uh, the underground anarchists and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, which I mean. You know, 
you know, I'm I'm willing to do that, but may, maybe I would have to 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 shut up about that if things got more authoritarian, <laughs> you know, in the states than they already are. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm sure I'm probably already on some lists somewhere, just for the the sorts of topics I cover in my podcast and the sorts of like, you know, books that I buy and yeah. or and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. I mean, I'm on somebody's list somewhere anyway. Oh, if, if if all of us aren't, then we're some of us. Are, then somebody's doing something wrong. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I haven't. I, LUA has been mentioned in an FBI investigatory document. This so. is true. This is true. I think. I think. <laughs> I think you have the. Uh, you have arrived. The the you biggest know? the, the Wait, biggest what? claim among, among yeah. most of us. <laughs> it doesn't do with me, but you know, I had the guy on my podcast, and they're investigating him. So oh. it was cool. Okay. It was pretty neat. Who, but who was <laughs> that again? I remember Gary Hunt. Oh yeah, yeah he yeah he was an old 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 time investigator, investigative journalist. Uh, he first covered Waco and got his, I guess, got popular that way. So interesting guy. Hmm. And also do with me, I'm not that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's still, it's still a badge of honor as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's sort of like you know, when when the. When the Southern Poverty Law Center classifies you as a hate group, you know, like, all right, I'm making a difference. Yep, there you <laughs> go. Yep, exactly. That's actually a very good. That's mm -hmm. a very good point. <laughs> yeah, I I hope to one day get there. We're not, yeah, we're we're not we're not, a, we're not offensive enough, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can tell that I'm I'm still you know only a modest sized show because uh, I've not I've not yet gotten on their shit list. But maybe yeah, maybe. but well, yeah, well, you can't be. You have to be relatively big. I mean, there aren't that many history podcasts out there that talk about things the way you do, man. <laughs> if actually there aren't any at all. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I saw a market opening, and I decided I would I would get in and cor corner the market, um, for a for a, a history podcast from an anarchist perspective. I mean, there's plenty of anarchist podcasts. There's oh. plenty of history podcasts. But. but Yes, I've got the 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 intersection to myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, for now at least. Well, you know, be, being first to market usually never hurts. Um, but but uh, speaking of your podcast, I know I know you uh, you took some you had to take some time off recently because uh, I mean you take you uh, the trip you you talked about you know you take you um, much we call it yearly now out to Ireland. Ireland yeah, I yeah, guess. take a bunch of college students to to Ireland for a week and a half. Yeah, and then unfortunately, you, as you talked about on one of your recent shows, you know you got sick you got sick while the, while there. So I, I got the flu at the very end <laughs> of the trip, and yeah, and if you think if you think flying coach across the Atlantic Ocean sucks, imagine with like really oh, bad man. flu. It was man, one of the man. worst days of my life. Yeah, I, 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 I could feel that by just listening to you talk about it. I no, mean, I, was, I, I was traumatized by it. Like, no joke. It was so bad. I've, I've never taken that trip at all, flu or not, but uh, yeah. I, can, I can only imagine. I, I, I would just be uncomfortable as all hell for that long of a flight anyway, Ugh. but... Oh man, but but yeah. So you, so you had to take a little more time after that, but 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 you're back again now. Right? I'm back. You, you, but uh, actually, listen. I think I listened to your most, your most recent episode on the way up here because uh, that's that's the one thing I still have plenty of time to do while I'm out on the road is listen listen to my podcast, yeah. which is great. Um, but uh, what, what do you what do you? Uh, I know uh, you, you still you still haven't finished that Civil War series. How many? You, you, I think you said you were, you're planning on doing two more, maybe three more two, in that one. Probably two two more, and I still have a few bonus episodes for the Patreon supporters that um, I'll probably get to a little bit later, but that are Civil War related, kind of like little little niche topics. You know, like one of them, <clears throat> I, I already did, I did a two-part for the Patreon supporters, a two-part um, Civil War uh, that was the naval aspects of the Civil War. Um, the first one was on the, the actual naval battles, which there weren't that many, but there were some between the Confederate and Union Navy. And then the second part, I, I focused mostly on the blockade, on the Union blockade and how it affected the South and how people tried to evade it and, and how, all that, how all that played out. Um, I might also do a, a bonus episode on the kind of irregular warfare in the Civil War, like the guerrilla warfare that, that happened. Obviously, it wasn't primarily that kind of war, but there there was, especially in places like Missouri, um, there was a lot of that that stuff going on. Places like that, and then I also um, am a little bit into into working on research for a bonus episode about sort of like the the weapons and tactics of the Civil War, like just just focusing on that. You know, how did mm. how did these things really work? How effective were they really? Were these soldiers actually all that well trained? 
in, in how to really be accurate with, with their muskets and everything. Um, and re really trying to, to give a good, good sketch of all that stuff. Um, so yeah, but then, then two episodes just finishing off the civil war, I'm going to do one, um, kind of the, the Confederate armies finally surrendering and all that. And then another kind of like wrapping it all up, looking back, tying it all together, kind of concluding thoughts on, on the, what the civil war really is, you know, what it, what it really means, what the legacies of it are. And I'm going to go through like different schools of thought a little bit, like how different, different groups and people have viewed the civil war over time. So anyway, that's, that's kind of, kind of what I'm thinking going ahead. And right. then I also, I've, I've, I know I've mentioned it to, to a few different people, um, I've got I've got Woodrow Wilson in in the crosshairs. I I, have, I think I, I think I might have heard you mention that. I am very much looking forward to that one because oh. uh, he was. I, I think I've mentioned on the show before. It might have actually been on one of the shows we had you on that. Uh, you know, for me, I I, I'm, I mentioned this part a lot of times. The fact that uh, unlike most of my friends, I came to the I came to anarchism through the study of history. Like a lot of my friends right. came to it through uh, economics. Um, but my my thing, what my original thing was uh, was the Whiskey Rebellion. When I first found mm. about when I first found out about that, that kind of shook my world because I was yeah. a huge Washington fan yep. and you know everything. And um, but the very next thing, I, you know, I jumped ahead a lot after, like, jumped all over the place after that. And the, the very next thing I came across was Wilson and what he was really up to. Oh, yeah. So I've had a deep seated hatred for that man for a very long time. So I'm very much looking forward to that type of yeah. that, those shows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's one of those common. Um, amongst our crowd, sort of, you know, somewhat farcical debates of who is the worst U.S. president of all time, and of course, I mean, they're all so terrible. That it's <laughs> it's it's hard to judge. Um, that I mean, well, that's not that's not true. Others. I still think William Henry Harrison was the greatest president of all time, and he can never he, be topped. <laughs> I don't. I think he did. The, I don't think he did very much damage at all. No, no, I don't, I don't think he did anything. Um, I don't think he did anything while he was uh, while he had a pulse. Um, and and I, I've been a, a proponent for a long time. If we're going to have a president, one thing we should consider is maybe having just a dead president, having sort of like a weekend at Bernie's. He's just. He's just He's, he's a nice looking corpse in a suit and you know there's a couple secret service guys who kind of like carry him around <laughs> yes. and, and like you know I love it. I love stick it. him on the float in the parade and like wave his arm at people and like <laughs> look you know it's it's the it's the less harmful aspects of the presidency just like a guy who waves and stuff without you know blowing people up and, and, and all that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was the, the Incan the ancient Inc Incans in Peru if I'm not mistaken they actually had this weird sort of custom with their monarchy where technically speaking they saw it as the reigning monarch is actually the dead king and his son who's still alive is sort of like like an assistant or a or a minister or something like that but technically speaking you've got this dead like partially mummified king sitting on a throne and they're like oh yeah he's he's in charge <laughs> so that's, you know, awesome. that, that's what inspired me for the for the 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 bernie's uh you know, not Bernie Sanders, but Bernie Lomax. <laughs> <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. Um, in another another one I've, I've thought of that would be a good idea is, um, you know, obviously the, the system of electing these people doesn't give good results. So I'm, I'm thinking if we are going to have a president, we should choose him through the following method. You, you get a, a really just completely deranged homeless person you get them <laughs> whacked out of their mind on whatever is their, their substance of choice. You blindfold them. You put them in front of a giant dartboard on which is written the name of every American citizen over the age of 35. You put a dart in his hand, spin him around a few times, point him at the dartboard and say, throw. <laughs> and whoever's name it hits on, that person is the president. <laughs> I think I like this. I, I think I actually like this one more. <laughs> yeah, and, and anybody who's like, well, what happens if you get someone who's really incompetent or really corrupt <laughs> or really evil? You know, my answer is just like, oh, it's hard to imagine. <laughs> I suppose that would suck. You know? um, and I, I, I'm also a proponent of if we're going to have a presidency, the, the, the term of office needs to be much shorter. You know, one week sounds good. Yes. If you're, if you're still not sure where the where the the bathrooms are in the white house uh before you're done <laughs> like you don't really have time to cook up a new iraq war or whatever you know you're just trying to figure out where things are <laughs> yeah i don't know 
Oh man, that's great. I, I haven't gotten any of the the conventional political activist types to take me up on any of my proposals. You know, I can't imagine why. Why are they, you know, aren't those folks trying to think, supposed to be thinking out of the box? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, instead, why don't we just pass an amendment that says we have to balance the budget? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that'll work. Why don't, why don't you just pass a law against bad things happening? <laughs> I mean, the budget thing. What are we? What is it? What are they up to now? They haven't. They haven't actually passed the budget since sometime in Bush's presidency. Yeah, something like that. I, I, I think I, I remember like 2006, maybe. I think I remember the date. I don't know why it's sticking in my head, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I like these ideas. They're great. Um, yeah, I mean, obvi obviously, you know, Plan A would be get rid of all this stuff altogether. But you know, if you have to have it, like there are some improvements that could be made. But you have to, you have to really think outside the box. Exactly. So, exactly. so have you have you ever heard of uh, Jim Bell? I don't know. Uh, assassination sure. politics? Mm, not sure. Not sure? Not sure. Okay. Well, Sounds like it might be vaguely familiar, but... but He's back in the mix now. He, he, okay. uh, he wrote, I guess, um, a four or five part uh, series on an idea for assassination politics hmm. um, using digital currencies and encryption and such. People bid on... Uh, or they, they, I guess they predicted the, the time of someone's death and... Whoever gets closest to it gets hmm. the reward for doing it, and that person will probably be the actual assassin. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not not familiar with that. Well, uh, yeah. I'm just curious. It's, it's an interesting, interesting part of I guess uh, crypto anarchist anarchist history. That's definitely outside the box. Yeah, yeah right. It is. Well, I, I guess I guess your feelings on that would come come to, uh, depend on uh, where you come down on uh, what's that Cla was it Claire Wolf's uh, statement? You know, it's uh, too or too 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 late to uh, work inside the system. Too late to shoot. Uh, too early to shoot the bastards. Right? Something yeah. Like that, yeah. Paraphrasing. Yeah. I think I did a video. I, I think it was sometime after the Dallas shooting that I did a video on that where uh, I actually challenged that. I said, I don't know, Claire. <laughs> Yeah. I think I you wrote that a little while ago. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it might might just be time. <laughs> yeah, they're now blowing people up with bombs. You know, this uh, mm -hmm. it's getting a little out of hand. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, though the the intellectual groundwork is not there. No, I know because yeah. you know that's where you say you when you mentioned before about you know the 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 idea would have everything be going away, but of course you know that brings to mind of the uh, you know the the old push the button question. Oh yeah, and uh, you know you know back to our conversation earlier about the whole uh, you know like when I was talking about my shift about you know the being very rigid to you know actually being a little more flexible again. Mm. Um, you know, I used to think, oh yeah, of course I want the button pushed, like whatever, we'll be fine. You know, I'll be fine. I don't know if everybody else will be fine, but I know me and some of my friends will be fine. We'll 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 repopulate the earth. We'll be crazy. Yep. Um, but I've you know I I quickly realized that was probably a bad idea. I don't know. I'm I'm guessing that you uh, you stand on the side of pushing the buttons. Probably not the best idea right now. No, no, yeah. no, because. Almost immediately, um, everybody would scramble to recreate the state. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think it was I think it was Ben Stone who put it this way: the the whole idea of of, of attacking the demand for the state rather than than yes. attacking the supply of it. Yes, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that was I thought that was you know a, a very a very interesting way to think about it. Um, very helpful way to think about it. So I don't know. That's what. That's why. I mean, I I focus more on, on the kind of. The 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 idea front, you know. This is that's just kind of kind of my wheelhouse. Um, sure. I, I admire the the people who are out there, you know, coming up with new cryptocurrency stuff and 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 new ways to, to get around get around a lot of the systems, um, but you know, there's we we've, we've we've got the we've got the division of labor. Yes. You know, yes. Exactly. We've all got our different our different things that we're interested in, and that we have skills in, and mine's just telling history stories. Yes. So. Well, <laughs> hey, hey, man. It's well, necessary. Well, well, yeah, exactly. Like we talked about before, you uh, <laughs> you're you're the only one out there, so it's definitely needed. So, and I absolutely agree with you that you know it's it's all about uh, fi fighting what you do best, and uh, especially if you're passionate about it, that kind of helps. Uh, yep. You know, and then just uh, do that, and uh, you know. 
you're you're bound you're bound you're bound to help people along the way by, by just doing that. Especially if you're the only one out there providing that service, yeah. there's a pretty good chance that you're helping people along the way. I mean, mm. you know, like I said, obviously, uh, you know, the history things history has always been my thing anyway. But uh, I still learn stuff from every single show I listen to no, uh, that's from cool. yours. So uh, and I look forward to them. And, and I, to while I understand what, that you were sick and stuff like that, <laughs> I, I missed you while you were gone. You know, yeah. it's kind of like I have plenty of podcasts to listen to, but I definitely I look forward to every one of yours, especially with the Civil War series going on because I've always yeah. been fascinated by that subject. Yeah, uh, well, even, even when I was a statist. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot. A lot of those are. Oops. A lot of those are. Um, you know those giant episodes too, and that that's another thing that slows me down, right? Because I of could course do, I could do four forty minute podcasts in a month, or I could do one, you know, two three hour special. Um, and I'm actually going to start going forward, um, probably doing the really long episodes less often. And I'm going to probably mostly break those up into smaller pieces from now on. You know, just instead of doing one three-hour episode, do do three one-hour episodes. Sure. Um, and Makes just sense. you know, break it up into parts. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I I I can only imagine the amount of work that goes into doing those things. But even still, with all that, you still managed to put them out quicker than Carlin and uh, Bill Lally. So, yeah. uh, man, <laughs> yeah, you got you, you got them beat. But uh, anyway, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I really appreciate it that hey. one. But it's already like you know ten thirty at night, and this oh, is the last geez. night here. I know. We, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so thank you so very I'm much. Old for, and tired. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, man, I, I I've been talking about this all weekend. How old, how how old I am, and I don't know. How I've been doing so half the stuff I'm doing this weekend. But um, yeah, yeah, well, I. I I can't stay up late as often as I used to. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have stayed up late as often as I have. But anyway, thank you so much again for sitting down with us. And uh, before you go, though, please uh, plug away, uh, you know, give your website and everything. And, uh, uh, yeah, Dangerous History, uh, DangerousHistoryPodcast.com. We'll get you to the homepage and just, you know, search Dangerous History or Dangerous History Podcast wherever you consume podcasts and you'll find it there. And, you know... Facebook, Twitter, all that usual stuff as well. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. It's always good talking with you. All right, Hey, CJ. Nice talking to you again, Thank you, CJ. Appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, sure. CJ gets applause. What the (laughs) heck, man? (laughs) No, you deserve it. Thank you, man. We'll talk talk to you before you leave. Sure. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we'll we'll probably be, well, Sh- well, Shane and I at least at least we'll probably be something the last to actually roll out of here tomorrow. So, okay. yeah. well, all right, yeah. Have all a right, good night, care. man. All right, hell yeah. Good so, times. Anyway, I, I can't even see anything in the dark. So whoever's out there, anybody else want to hop on the mic um, or you know well, we we'll, we'll no keep talking there, for a little while. Go round up some more people. Well, oh yeah, CJ, if you see Nick out there, tell him to get his ass over here. Yeah, we had a couple more people who were waiting Jesus to try to get Christ, on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not standing here at the moment. Well, that's all right. Well, we, hey, you know, Phoenix is back, so that's all right. Exactly. We'll, we'll, you gotta we'll, be you gotta be ready to jump up, jump on the marketplace when yeah. it's ready to go. There you go. So wait a minute. I, that, now that you, now that you've returned, I, I I I have in my hand this drink that you handed me before. Yes. This is just lemonade. That is water, lemon juice, sugar, and vodka. That's what it is. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> it's tasty, I must say. A lemon shake up. Exactly. What a lemonade shake up? Is that what you call them? Um, that is a vodka shake up. Vodka shake up. There you go. I don't it's, know. I asked for I asked for a drink, and this is what he handed me. It's pretty tasty, and I don't really like vodka either. You know, I my my roommate. He's 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 really big into food service. He's you know made that his career or whatever. That's what he he prides himself on his ability to to cook a burger, and he actually taught me by. Just talk. Oh, the bur- yeah, the burger. The burgers, by the way, burger. but delicious. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I can. I, oh, mic down. Oh no! Um, stop knocking, knocking stuff over. He actually taught me how to cook a burger. I mean, he just described it, and I was like, okay, yeah, I can figure that out. Because um, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a line cook type of guy. I'm not the, uh, I'm not the, the the server type of guy. Um, I'm, I'm the, I'm the big picture, big idea. You know, I don't, I don't think in details, at least from my perspective, I don't think in details. And so, you know, he, he gave me a heads up on, you know, you, you wait till you slap the burger on. He, he made it a point to say you slap the burger on cause you want to get that sound. Cause you know, the auditory thing, it's, it's a big part of the marketing your, your product. And so, you know, and then you wait till it gets drippy and then you flip it. The whole, the whole point of cooking burgers is you wait, you, you want to flip it one time. And that's it. Um, and yeah. you know, I got a guy. Got to give a big uh, shout out to him, Tyler. Like thank you very much. Was that? I'm sorry, I missed it. My 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 roommate Tyler, oh, aka okay. Mud. I got to give him a shout out. He he taught me how to cook the burgers. So, you know, 
he 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 I wanted him to be here. There was a, a chance that he could have been here, but it did it fell through. So, oh well, that's a shame. Yeah, but you know the the market moves on, and uh, and the seeds of liberty continue to be planted everywhere. <laughs> well, um, that's the goal, right? Well, that is the. Uh, it depends on the perspective. I mean, well, for us, for, for at least it's for me, it's the goal. Some people, a, a lot of the Vanuists, they're not they're not into planting the seeds anymore. They want to, you know, they, they've got the seed and their their tree is growing. They they're a sapling ready to to plant roots and 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 make, you know, something grow. Well, they're done dropping their seeds. You know, well, that's, at least that's how I that's how I view Vanu. Well, that I I, I could I could see that, and I, I think on the whole, maybe a lot of people have, but at least for me, I mean, and again, I what I do in this realm is, uh, you know most likely extremely temporary and it's more of an experiment but it fits right in with everything else i'm trying to do which is uh even though i'm more focused on what i could do to make myself and my family freer mm -hmm. uh part of why i'm doing it is to uh to lead by example just to instead of talking about it to actually show people what can be accomplished when you, one actually puts their mind to it okay and i can totally understand that so I'll just take it off your debt then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we're working out deals live on the air here. That's great. Agorism for the win. Yes. Um, that makes it eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, you know, the only reason that I'm an anarchist is because of my children. The only reason that I care as vehemently as I do about the future and about human interactions is because I have children. Um, because I really think that without that, I'd just be a self-absorbed narcissist that really doesn't give a shit about anything else. And so, you know, they're my seeds. So they're the reason that I advocate so vehemently to like all my coworkers, my employers, like literally everyone around me back in servile society, they fucking hate it when I'm around because the only thing I talk about is liberty and, and morals and, and how this and this applies to liberty and how this applies to liberty. And, you know, it's, it's literally to the point where I've tainted the well with all those people. And, but I'm not going to stop because I'm just going to continue to be me and you well, know, they'll get it one day. See, that's funny. I, I, uh, almost, almost everything you said you were talking about is in describing yourself. I was, I was nodding my head along to you going, yeah, that the, we, we, it really sounds like me. Uh, except when you got to the very end, only that did sound like me too, up until a point, because I've tried to, I haven't necessarily tried to mend bridges with too many of the people that I, that I kind of alienated by doing what you described right. by continuing with talk. Cause I did that. Like I, the, for the, especially in the very first year after I found anarchism, mm -hmm. uh, and finally real, you know, finally just gave up on the system. I, uh, I definitely alienated a lot of people by being pretty much in everybody's face about liberty. Yeah, it's so it's so easy to just to lash out emotionally because you're you're fucking pissed off. Of course, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I refer to it often as the angry anarchist phase. That's Wh the resentment. Like, why don't you understand this? I well, resent the shit out of you, and I'm going to do everything I can in my power to make you see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it was just even like a lot of times I was just like, "Why are you so dumb? It's right here. I found the answer." You know, like back, back when we were talking about when CJ was here about the whole very you know the very rigid position of like right think you know c coming over to anarchism and go oh now i have all the answers i don't have to think anymore it's like well no how did you get here you got here by constantly questioning everything doesn't that mean you should continue to question everything even though especially if you think you found the answer Doesn't right. that, that isn't even more important if the listeners haven't haven't had the chance to yet by the time this is published and cj's talk is published go over there and check out cj's talk at Mendoza peace and liberty fest it's all about you know breaking out of the the confirmation bias box that you that you get comfortable in and it happens to anarchists and it happens to, as he was pointing out it happens to intelligent individuals more often than it happens to you know your average joe your your 95 iq individual you know because i'd say the, the vast majority of individuals in the liberty movement i have an iq of 120 or above um because we grasp the ideas that are so complicated and, and, and of course completely coincidentally the uh, the rate of asperger's within the libertarian community is extremely high but anyway anyway sorry continue hey you know, <laughs> they, they go they, they coincide Absolutely. As an as 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 one of the founders of Aspergertarianism with Lisa Delasho, I am free, I am completely free to make this make, make these kind of comments. So uh, anybody who's offended, kiss my ass. Sorry, continue, Ken. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. You don't Fake need Phoenix. a goddamn permission slip. <laughs> you don't you don't need a. Uh, hey, I'm part of this fucking collective. I can make these jokes. No, fuck that. Uh, you, you, you don't get fuck your feelings. I think it's I think it's funny that I I think that I think the explanation is just as funny as the fact that, that we call ourselves that. So you know what? I'm gonna do it. Continue. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Aspergertarians. 
it's no worse than the Radical Caucus, you know. <laughs> I th- hey, I think we're better than the Radical Caucus. <laughs> I, I know we were, talking, we were talking about how much we missed James early, James Weeks earlier, but you know what? I, I still think that the Aspergatarians are better. Anyway, continue. <laughs> so, I don't know where I was saying, but... Well, you, were, you were talking about CJ's talking about how oh you know, the, yes uh, how um you know the the whole it's so easy for intelligent people to get caught up in in their own confirmation bias um, because we get so so laser beam focused to where we exclude all other possibilities all other opinions all other perspectives um, to to our own detriment um, and that happens with a lot of extremely intelligent extremely well adept well versed well read individuals um, because we think we, we get comfortable in our own arrogance and we think that you know this is as far as I have to go and there's nothing more I can learn and and I've I've always tried to have this sense in the back of my mind that I don't have it perfect. The, I, my anarchy can be refined. It's it's like kung fu. You know, your kung fu in in the old kung fu movies, you, you, it, it's never perfect. You can always perfect. You can always learn from another another master. You can always incorporate another move, another another method, another technique. And it's the same with with advocating. You know, n- you know abolitionism. You know, the end of actual slavery, um, where one group of people controls the reins and the and the the destiny and the lives of the mass majority of people and um so if if you're if you're able to apply or understand the fact that this echo chamber exists that is going to reinforce that 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 confirmation bias then you know you can you can use mental ninjutsu to overcome whatever whatever bullshit you put in front of yourself because we are our own worst enemies and you know like a lot of the problems that i have in my own personal life i've developed because of my own fears and my own um inability to overcome myself and i think that's the same with a lot of people so when we get comfortable in in our echo chambers and that, that confirmation bias kicks in and and we stop questioning it that's that's a huge detriment to us if that made any sense no, it absolutely did. it absolutely did. Um, you know. And uh well hopefully uh you know like like you know, we we've talked a lot about this type of stuff since we've been here and just you know, hopefully more people start figuring this out. We'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get somewhere someday, right? <laughs> right. But at the moment a big celebritarian came yes. and I'd love to hear what he has to say, Mr Mr. Randy England. Yes, we've uh we we I'd we, love for him to take over the seat here. Yes, I we we'd love for we'd love for Randy to join us too. He uh he Whatever he, you'd like to talk about, he, whatever shoot he, the shit. Man. We're, we're, talking we're talking about whatever we want to talk about, Randy. Uh, why don't you just sit down and we'll figure it out. Uh, we couldn't get Randy on the last show, but uh, now that he's here back again, we're going to have him sit down for a while. All right. And uh, hopefully. So, yes. Okay, now jo- I'm here. Now, now joining us is uh, one of my co-hosts on the Freedom Fiends, one of, uh, one of the few of us that are still left around there, around the, around, around the Freedom Halls of the Freedom Fiends. Uh, left here at the fest or oh, that too. the Freedom yeah, Fiends? That too. As it's getting later on Sunday night, the uh, numbers are dwindling here. But, yes, well, Mr. Randy Ingram. England from the Freedom Fiends is here. What's up, Randy? How you doing? Well, if we took a vote, we would be outvoted by the X Fiends. Yes, <laughs> probably. Well, well we definitely be we definitely be outvoted by the X Fiends. There's a whole lot of X Fiends. There's actually a whole bunch of X Fiends yeah, here. I I, I, decided, I I was making too much money. I had to retire early. Well, yeah, you don't count. Yeah. You and Nick don't count. Well, you that's guys. what that's what I did too. Yeah. You know, I, I got so filthy rich, and you know, uh, how yeah. many jets can you use at one time? <laughs> I got to thirteen, but you know, four, yeah, couldn't do fourteen, so I just got got rid of it all. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this has been the best fest, I think. Yeah. See, you know, it's funny. We were talking about that earlier. I, uh, you know, I mean, well, actually, you, this is we. Uh, I mean, we mentioned we're here at the uh, the sixth annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Now, uh, how many? This is this your? If you've been this, year, is this your fourth year or fifth year? Fifth year. Yeah. So you've been here every every, every year, year since they came to Circle Pines. First one. So you've been every year. Yeah, every year here at Circle Pines because yeah. they came to the Circle Pines Center in the in the, in the second year, right? Are yeah. my sound levels okay? Yeah, you're good. You're great. All right, good. I didn't ask. That's quite all right. So. I, I said I said the mic I said the mics as long as you, well you know how to do it as long as you're talking in the mic we're good. And we had uh, Scott Horton, probably by himself, <laughs> would, would have been a perfectly good headliner. He did a great job. Man, the guy's a brain. Yeah, that, I, I I was I I love that. Uh, that was that was the that was of all the sh- of all the presentations. Even though there was like a lot of my friends giving presentations and stuff that I really wanted to go out and support. Uh, that was the one that I had to see because 
I, I mean, I not only this was this my first opportunity to meet him, but I like I, so obviously I've never seen him speak live, and uh, you know I've been a fan of his forever. So I, I was like, I and, and because he was, I knew he was only going to be here for a short time. I'm like, I have to go see that. <laughs> no, I mean it was exactly what I expected because the guy. There, how could there be anybody that knows any more about it? I mean, there, there may be some policy, yeah. <laughs> if there's a foreign policy advisors in the White House, they they would probably be handicapped by their neoconness or something, <laughs> neo something like that. So someone who uh, can take a step back and doesn't have a, an elected office on the line, I would take his opinions on on foreign policy over anyone I can think of. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's he's definitely he's definitely my go-to guy. Although I must say, and this is actually somebody that uh, Scott actually Scott himself actually promotes. There's a there's a young guy uh, Kyle Anzalone, who now also does a show called Foreign Policy po- Focus, and uh, Scott actually promotes him. So uh, I think he's trying to he he's trying he's trying to prep himself for like the eventual day that Scott gives up because you know he's been doing this hardcore for how many years? I mean, he started in the late '90s, I think, right? Uh, 98, 99, somewhere around there on the on the. Uh, radio stations yeah, I've only been aware of him for like 10 years so yeah but no I, I'm pretty sure because I've, I've I've I ignored him for a while I mean I knew who he was and I read some of his articles but I didn't start listening to his show until about two years ago and I haven't missed one since <laughs> I had a, I, when I first saw antiwar.com I was antiwar but I thought if a site was called antiwar.com it must be commies uh, just just because of my you know my upbringing in the 60s and, <laughs> and that sort of thing sure of course i couldn't have been more wrong about that yeah um and, and it's a good thing too that that um someone besides the lefties are carrying the anti-war banner because the lefties aren't carrying it at all they've thrown in and they're, well, the, they they're, they're slowly returning now that trump's in you know the the the, the, the fake the fake anti-war left is slowly coming back you really think <laughs> Uh, I've I've seen it a, I've seen it a little bit at least, again from my own perspective I've I've seen it a little bit more but I I just assumed that would happen you yeah, know well, I, I'll believe it when I when I see the left congratulating Trump if he actually uh, oh well that that can't happen Korea. that listen Randy that's totally separate of course they there, there's no connection there whatsoever you know there's no contradiction there whatsoever don't don't let's not go down that road. No <laughs> No, but I, I don't. I, I don't disagree with you because they won't. They they can't. I mean, look what happened with the uh, you know talking about Trump and that whole thing with the left. What what was it? The uh, you know because they they were all worried about the the Dreamer thing because Trump said he, he was he was, kept saying he was going to end the Dreamer program that Obama started, and then he Trump turned around and said, "All right, listen, I'll end up." He went, He ended up offering a deal that he was going to give amnesty to even more than what was under the dreamer program and the left freaked out they were like well no we can't they, they had to they had to find some other way to get mad at him in order to to not accept that deal even though it was getting more than what they originally claimed they wanted you know you 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 can really measure you know how a person is their objectivity is if they're willing to praise the person they hate and um when Obama was president, I, I don't think I liked much that he did, but some things were really good, and I just, I, I, I couldn't possibly ignore that, even though I generally did not like him, and Donald Trump is exactly the same. I truly despise <laughs> the man, and, and I came to, uh, to voluntarism, you know, more from a conservative standpoint, and maybe I despise him because he's he's not a he's not a conservative either I, I, he's a new york democrat know. yeah yeah he is and um and although you know the right love it i mean i've got lots and lots of friends you know that i go out to the shooting range with and everything and they 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 love him they've loved him since before uh he was elected it was pretty i, I don't know you know how everybody thought that trump would um, was going to lose to Hillary. I never thought that for a second. I, oh, I, I was one of those ones. I, I didn't. I didn't. Find, I wasn't finally convinced until about a month before the election. I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe he really does have a chance. I, I except for, uh, you know, uh, a few of my children's spouses, I couldn't even find anyone that liked Hillary. Now I was in Missouri, and that's that colors things. But I'm thinking, if. Um, 
people who are sure that she's going to be elected, they they must be having. I mean, they're talking to the people that are around them in their their circle, but they maybe should expand their circle because it sure <laughs> seems to me. I mean, I got to find somebody somewhere that uh, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't even criticize Trump in front of you know my my gun friends, mm-hmm. and um, they wouldn't have it. They still don't like it much, but they don't throw me out. You know. Because I, I try to actually find something that I like that he did. Of course, the thing is, the thing that, like, like North Korea is a good thing. I mean, it would really be good if they would get that that thing settled. Oh, sure. And they and they don't they don't need to be an enemy and you know rattle on sabers with us and the other one. And I don't know if a lot of these friends would would like that either. And they're not on the left. They yeah. they wouldn't like it because they just wouldn't like it. The left might like it, but they wouldn't like it if Trump did it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, yeah, like you said, you know, I mean, I, I'm the same way, or at least I am now, since I've I've kind of shifted my views on a lot of things. Where, I mean, yeah, I, I was I was never. I mean, I always found Trump fascinating because, I mean, being from New York for most of my life, I've been very aware of the man. Like I can remember him in the mid '80s, you know. Um, and uh, I, I've I've always found him fascinating, but I was never really a fan of him. But I still try, you know, and even with Obama, who like uh, I've, I, I mean, I've talked about on the show, admittedly, just like uh, Danilo used to admit all the time freely, uh, and then finally uh, he dragged that at me one time that I actually did a vote, vote for him, Obama, the first time around. But that's just because I was still a uh, a very useful idiot for the left. Um, but you know, I towards the end of things, once I started putting all, every, all this other stuff together and started to come to libertarian and anarchism, I tried to like at least not just hate him because I mean, I obviously say like just like you said, I'm like not a fan of pretty much most of the things he did. But like with Obama, for instance, like I thought the guy, I thought the Iran deal was a great thing. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out if he's an idiot or uh, or a puppet, you know, <laughs> evil genius, or, or what? Yeah, I mean. You have this guy. I mean, he has all these billions of dollars, and I'm sure he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, and and got wealth, and then multiplied it over, and went broke, and whatever, and all of that. And you you kind of think, you know, if you want to be, you know, charitable and not a jerk, you go, well, that guy must have something on the ball. But every time he opens his mouth, he contradicts that in almost <laughs> every way. Back going back to the. I mean, how he could say such idiotic things in all of those debates, particularly the debates against his fellow Republicans. Yeah. And yet he just, he, he cut all their throats from the first debate and on through. And then he handled, handled Hillary, you know, good enough to get, eke it out. So I, I still don't know what to think of the guy. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if, I don't think I can dismiss him as an idiot, but he always sounds like one. Yeah, I mean, I, I I tend to lean towards idiot, but again, that just might be my long you know long term what we're talking about over thirty year bias at this point. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I mean, there there is a chance that you know, although I mean, the more and more I hear like the people we were talking about earlier, like you know, some of the libertarians for Trump and people who kind of just uh, fell into this uh, uh, you know the stuff that CJ was talking about before when he was here about uh, you know people's being very rigid and just. Uh, you know, uh, thinking they ha- they have to do things in a certain way. The uh, you know when when it comes to when it comes to Trump, like I said, I, I I don't know. I like to think he's stupid, but when they talk about like the fourth degree and like or what's it up to now, like thirty seven millionth degree chess that he's supposedly playing with uh, some of this stuff, I have less and less confidence that he's actually planning any of this. And I I I, <laughs> I, I just again I maybe just be biased, but <laughs> because of my previous th- thoughts on him, well, I but, don't like to think he, that he's stupid. He does have his finger on the button. Well, on so, on certain things, but he's a uh, you know he what he's a, he's a great Twitter troll. That doesn't necessarily make him smart. So, like I said, everything else I see from him, and just like you were talking about, the fact that he manages to contradict the, to con- anytime you think that he manages to contradict it with pretty much the next thing he says or tweets, uh, it leads me to believe that is he. I mean, I know he's not stupid, but he's 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 not very bright. You know, he he's very he's very intelligent when it comes to certain things. Like obviously, he's figured out business and he's figured out how to. Uh, manipulate people through uh you know very easily in a, in a very trolly manner because he's always he's a, he he was a troll long before the internet troll became a thing 
You know, that was always kind of his thing. At least, again, from my perspective, you know, looking back from like uh, from an eight year old on, because that's the first time I became aware of him in eight, like eighty five ish. So I was about eight then. So yeah, um, that's just how I've always seen him. Like he 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 seems to always have the the right you know the to know what he's doing, but it's but it, but when you look at it closely, it seems more often than not that you know there's a lot of luck involved. <laughs> I know, but and, everybody when like when he was going to go to negotiate with Kim Jong Un. Mm-hmm. That's the right guy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's and a, all of the media, you know, pretty uniformly were saying, well, what's going to happen? He's going to get over there. This guy's going to clean his clock, going to shave half of his hair off <laughs> and cut the butt out of his pants and send him home, just like happened to Ronald Reagan and Gorbachev. And uh, and it didn't, didn't happen. About the only thing, they had to resort to... Uh, well, he, he, he gave away too much or something like that. They had to, they had to outwar him because they couldn't come back. Now, where it's going to end, did you see the, the news? Uh, I read an article today about how things have changed in um, North Korea. Oh, really? And they're, all of the anti-American propaganda has come down from the walls everywhere. Wow. And the anti-American souvenirs in the sh- shops. And that this was reported by some guy that runs tours. Uh, to North Korea, mm. and they said since March this has been coming down. Ever since Trump announced that he was going to to meet with North Korea, and uh, and it has only accelerated. Mm. Uh, I I think it. That's it, interesting. Uh, you know, I I mean, it's you may be a fool's you know hoping that something like this would happen, but well, maybe I, it can. Well, no, I I mean I I see what you're saying there, but I mean one of one of the uh, most often uh, I was gonna say critiques, but maybe just even uh, uh, you know the uh, the perspectives uh, on this whole on this whole situation that I that I've heard a lot is that you know Kim Kim Jong Un because a lot of people think he's either crazy or stupid or both uh, you know is actually being very shrewd and you know. They, there's a good chance that they don't even have most of what they're claiming to, you know, give up. But this is just like in order to get back to the good graces and stuff. So it would that would seem to fit in with all that. That uh, that of course they would. I mean, of course they're going to br- try to bring a lot of it down before Trump actually gets there. Um, but to uh, you know, all of a sudden, f- what seems like flipping the switch like that. It, you know, it's it's a it's an opportunistic move because I, I mean I don't pers- at least from what I know and I I get a lot of my information you know again from people like Scott Horton and this uh, the other guy I mentioned before Kyle Anzalone and uh, some other people I trust them when they talk when they or, and Michael Malice too actually he he's so he's somebody I go to a lot for uh, for for what you call it for uh, he's, things he's on North Korea. Dude. Oh yeah, Michael Malice. He, yeah, uh, yeah. He's a, he's a he's a fascinating guy. He's a, he's a funny guy too. Um, but he know. I mean, he actually he's, went. He's an there. anarchist. You can put it on TV. Yeah. Not, is he really? Yeah. He's uh, yeah. he's he's uh, an he, anarchist who likes Alexander Hamilton, though. That is, I, I that do is disagree with up. him vehemently about that. that his is, uh, that his is, love yeah. of, his love of Hamilton is a little worrisome. But on on North Korea, he seems to be great because he actually went there. You know, his uh, his right. book de- his yeah. book dear reader is. I mean, uh, is it's funny, but it's also. So, you know, it's kind of informative, you know, what he's with the perspective he saw it from. Who do you think the Hamilton thing? Maybe it's just he's just trolling. And you know what? With him, it's extremely. I have thought that before. It's extremely possible. But the fact that he goes that he's goes, he's gone so hard, including in a Soho Forum debate against, you know, Tom Woods, who, of course, now they're extremely good friends. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's tough to tell with him. But I mean, I, I of all people, Hamilton, because he was the one. I mean, I mentioned before when 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 CJ from the Dangerous History podcast was on the show with us, that you know my my uh, journey to anarchism started with a study of history, and the very first thing that I came across that started changing my whole worldview was when I realized what actually happened with the Whiskey Rebellion. Because I had only known about it pretty much in name, like it was like talked about in passing when I was in school, and when I found out what actually happened and what a role Hamilton played in that, uh, my you know my next thing was one of my very next thing was was to dig into exactly what was all, what Alexander Hamilton was all about, and uh, I found nothing but pretty much bad pretty much nothing but bad things. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. He he could be very well be, well be trolling. I don't know. He he is that good. I mean, if you've ever paid attention to Michael Malice's Twitter feed, he is amazing how 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 easily he suckers people in. 
even even with even with the very way he types like the name of his podcast is you're welcome except it's spelled <laughs> y-o-u-r right. and he that's how he tweeted at people like purposely misspelling it and just like totally messing with people's minds like he, he's is he's, that, he's, he's an like amazing you, troll you complimenting my pronunciation exactly <laughs> Yes. Actually, no one compliments my pronunciation <laughs> no. because I properly pronounce the name of the state that I'm from. Well, you know what? Thanks to you, I now I, I actually I found myself correcting people whenever the state of Missouri comes up. <laughs> you say I, I know somebody from Missouri. Yes, <laughs> and I said, this. listen, but, you know he, he's he's a hardcore na- he's a, he's a he's a hardcore Missouri nationalist, so I'm just going to trust him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you if you catch somebody from St. Louis, you'll almost certainly get a a Missouri. Yeah. But then St. Louis was was a bunch of uh, you know unionists back in the Civil War. So what do they do? <laughs> and further west you went, the uh, the less they wanted uh, wanted to be <laughs> part of that war. Yeah. We voted. When I say we, the the state of Missouri, I was I was not alive then despite my advanced age, <laughs> and uh, oh, okay. voted to remain neutral and basically sent the note to both the Confederacy and the Union to stay the hell out of Missouri. But Lincoln did not accept that. Oh, what a shock. Yes. Good old honest Abe. <sighs> anyway, um, well, so uh, what we started talking about before, and then we drifted all this conver- this political conversation. We I don't drift know how- back. Where was it we came from? Uh, well, I don't know. Well, originally we just started talking about you know the fest itself, but you, we immediately got to Scott Horton, which took us to foreign policy, which took us to Trump, which took us to everywhere else. Well, that's but, all logical. Well, of course. Okay. Of course. I, I wasn't saying we just like you know random. Off- it, it's not like we're with <laughs> Dave and he just like ham fisted segued it. Wait, wait, is actually I just realized Shane walked away and never came back before. Uh, Shane Radliff is still here because he's just never leaving the seat apparently how would um, you know shane radliff was here i he, yeah he doesn't say a lot saying anything yeah he, hey I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just enjoying the conversation <laughs> just Shane. waiting for the next mosquito to swat <laughs> but 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 the uh the other actual co-host of the seats of liberty had just wandered away and he never returned i i don't know if he got lost or whatnot i thought at first he was he was out rounding up more people to, to bring on the show but who else are the co-hosts on on the seeds of liberty well well current well it's still dave and i my my, my friend dave painter and uh we have uh, andre kira uh who joined us uh, he was he was the one who we replaced uh danilo with after danilo Cuellar left us and uh, Shane Buell, who is also a co-host with us on the Freedom Feeds. Who was on the Seeds of Liberty when I was on the show last time? Uh, how was that long? Andre? Uh, probably Andre. And Dave and you. Yeah, probably. it was probably Dave, Andre, and I. Okay. Uh, most likely. Yeah, we had, we actually asked Shane to join us uh, a little while after he joined the Fiends, um, because we actually we we knew that. Well, we knew we were going to have issues when I came out on the road because we knew that was happening, and uh, with Dave actually. His uh, his farm and his business down there in Alabama is starting to take off. So he had said that he was going to be missing more and more shows. So we needed a uh, we needed yet another co-host. <laughs> so we brought Shane aboard, uh, but now he's gone. I don't know where he is. Is he down there in what Montgomery or Birmingham? Uh, Dave. Oh, geez, I forget where he is. I think he's somewhere near Birmingham, but uh, in the north of Alabama. Yeah, I I, I want to say he's even further north than our, than Birmingham, but I can't remember. Uh, I know him and Andre are somewhere like two hours apart down there. Um, but he also never leaves the state, which is why he's not here, which is why Shane and I are doing the Seeds of Liberty. Well, now I am just doing the Seeds of Liberty since Shane walked away. Uh, but that's why we're doing shows up here. I'm sure he'll be back. And I've just be, while the show started, I wasn't even here. I just sort of, of course. came in at, at some point. Well, that was the whole point of this, Randy. That's why I said, come back whenever. We'll have you on. Come back whenever. But there are a number of people I ran into along the way that promised that they were going to come over here. I know. And, uh, take over your show. and uh, Nobody has. They're not showing up. I know. No. Nick, 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 is now to- Nick Hazleton has now told me twice that he would be here. Well, uh, the last time I saw him, he was over there... Uh, Sue chefing and washing dishes for Lou Sander. Well, yes, we, we talked about that earlier, how he's the little commie indentured servant. But, um, 
Yeah, well, see, well, you know what? You you did show up, and I appreciate that because you actually came to hang out and listen a few times too. So uh, you've actually done more than pretty much all of our other, our, our other friends. Thanks, thanks, Randy. I appreciate that. I really that. have. have uh, yes, you have. have. Uh, but no, but Prof CJ actually did. He he promised he would show up earlier, and he actually did. He oh, he, he did show up. Over yes, here? yeah, he, he, cool he, he was here a little before you. You showed back up. Well, I I went over, and he was. Eating his his uh, prime rib that Lou fixed him. Yes, well that and that's why we told that's him why he, that he was supposed to be over here. Yeah, that's what the, he missed the first show because uh, he he said he would do it and you know he was quite happy to come down. But then like I, I mentioned, Brett Finot stole him away from us, um, and of course I as I as I also mentioned, I am no Brett Finot, so of course he sat down with Brett and then dinner was ready. So he had the you know he had Lou's dinner, um, but he, he he did join us. He actually sat down for quite a while. He was here for like 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, okay. so it was great. Because um, I, I always, I, I, am, I unfortunately miss CJ's talk. So there was thirty or forty-five minutes where the show was actually interesting. Yeah, uh, during that time, he <laughs> always is uh, uh, unfailingly and actually, uh, not to take anything away from him, but he is far more engaging when you're sitting at the picnic. Table oh, absolutely. Then, then when you're, you're the, he's doing the lecture, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's, like I said, not to take away from him. No. Uh, he's, he's fascinating. Well, no, I, I, I it's so funny. Cause I, I said that to him before. Cause we've, he's, he's been on the show. He's been on the show a couple of times and I actually said that to him one of the times before I, I, I and I actually prefaced it by saying, I'm not trying to offend you, but like you have that, you have a voice that almost puts almost puts me to sleep, but not because you're boring because it's so relaxing. But but you're right. When in person, he's more animated, and he also he's a lot freer to talk about a lot, especially in a setting like this where he's where he feels comfortable. Uh, you know, he's he, he talks a lot more freely, and he's he, you know he gets very excited. I mean, and he was I mean just before he was joking around. You know, he was uh, he was he was cracking us up towards the end of it because he is he's a lot more uh, you know just loose. And, uh, and you know more more the real him. Not not that I don't think he's the real him on his show, but he, you know he's trying to be. He's trying to teach, like you said. It's not it's not like a lecture. It's more you know just like. Uh, and I learned that uh, two years ago at, at Porkfest when uh, when we were there, and uh, I got to meet him for the first time and hang out. And uh, I got to spend a few days with him there, and it was great just sitting around the campfire with him. So you were at Porkfest in 2016. Yeah, in that- June, and then. And then I came in I had, August. You were both here again. Yes, yes, yeah. I got to hang out with him. I, I, that, that was the last time I saw him. But yeah, I got to hang out with him, hang out with him twice that year, which was, was fantastic. <laughs> no, that was the year I met him. I didn't even know about his podcast, but I oh, I I take, I, I, I take them all in. I, I I have been a big fan. I can't. I, I I found out about him a little late. I think I would. I think I came in around episode thirty or so. Maybe you know it's thirty, thirty-five, somewhere around there. I, I I heard about him. I'm like, oh, I have to listen to this guy, and I started, and I went back and listened to the first thirty-five, and then caught up. And um, but I've been a fan ever since. And uh, yeah, I, I was very, lu- I was very lucky that not only got to, I got to hear him speak uh, at those at those events, but I also got to hang out with him <laughs> twice because you know I had the va- I had advantage. I was the low fiend on the totem pole, but I was still a fiend, so I was with all the other fiends. And uh, CJ was a friend of the fiend, so I got to hang out with him, and it was great. And uh, especially at Pork Fest, uh, sitting around. I think I actually told that story once. Uh, the the second time I did mushrooms up there, because the first time obviously everybody knows I was on the air, <laughs> uh, but the second time I. I did it where we just sat around the fire and I just it was I, the first time the year before 2015. No, 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 but 2016, both times. Oh. Uh, uh, I did it on the air though, though. So, what was it the 2015, the year before? Right? I, I didn't go to any festivals in 2015. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so you were not, were not up there that year. No, no, no. 2016 was were. my first and only pork fest, and then uh, my my first uh, my first of three Midwest Peeps and Liberty Fest. Was but. is 2016 was that the year that that uh, Ian and Free Talk Live got kicked out of the yeah that, that yeah that was the year that uh, we all were debating because uh, they offered us the free tickets and a bunch of the fiends yes. were like I don't you know James James Babb was still a fiend at the time and, and refused to you know refused to take the free ticket um, in solidar- solidarity with Ian and uh, you know Mike, Mike Michael kept saying well you know it's up to you guys and then we decided well because Nick and I had never been there. And it was Nick wouldn't be able to. Nick definitely wouldn't be able to go without the free tickets. Uh, I would have been stretching my budget at the time if I spent money on the tickets. So both of us were like, "Yeah, we like we like Ian and we want to stand up for him, but you know, it's free tickets." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's when we started Fiend Fest Somalia, which we actually learned during our first recording today, uh, which was last week's episode. The 
they is now called uh, what? What did he say? For uh, Fork Apoco? Uh, no, for, for Fork Fest. Uh, fork Fork Fest. Yeah. Fork Fest. Uh, it, it's now been rebranded because um, he kept mentioning the guy uh, Jason or T uh, rather. Sorry that we had on earlier. <laughs> <laughs> what was his last name? Oh gosh, I I don't know the name he came up with. T Safu Mufasova. What the heck is it? I don't know, dude. I, so, is, so, it, is it so too high at this point? Samof, that might be it. Samof. Who we had on the who we had on last week's episode? <laughs> Mr. T. <laughs> Mr. T. Yes, we we had that whole conversation too. Um, you know, he kept mentioning this to me since we've been here, since we met up at first, and uh, I didn't put two and two together until we were sitting here talking tonight, where he said that uh, it had actually been originally Fiend Fest, it had originally been uh, Somalia Fest, and I was like, oh, that was us. We started Fiend Fest Somalia in 2016. It's now quickly morphed into two in two years into Fork Fest. <laughs> Which people, I wonder, does Free Talk Live broadcast at the? I, I the Fork see. Fest? I actually don't know. I would think that would make sense. I know at least. I mean, obviously in 2016, and I know it last year in 2017. I assumed this year. Uh, as well, but I know James Babb was definitely a part of it uh, the first two years. I assumed he would be, and it would make sense that uh, Free Talk Live would go there too, but I don't know. I miss Jim Babb. I do too. I've uh, I've talked about them before. I've, I mean, I've said it to Michael too. Like, I mean, I mean, he sa- he says it all the time too. You know, J- James was one of the best, and uh, it was it was a shame that he's no longer with us. But I did well, get he's, he's well, not not with the he's fiends with us. Not, but, yeah, sorry, not not with us. the fiends anymore because. Yes. I only got to do a couple shows with him because uh, we only overlapped for about three or four months before uh, that whole debacle happened. No, I really enjoyed having him on, and I did did some shows with him, and yeah, always enjoyed it. He's uh, he's a uh, better wit than I am, and <laughs> he's and a better wit than most other things. Yeah, yeah. very enjoyable to to do the do a show with him. Uh, I, the only other person that kept me hopping more was to do a show with Derek J. <laughs> he, he was hilarious. He, de- yeah, Derek. I got. I only got to do. I think one, maybe two shows with Derek because obviously he had been like retired and would come back for like once or twice a year for quite a, for a while before I got there. Um, but he was definitely fun to do a show with. But James, yeah, I, uh, I like I said, I, I only did like one or two shows with him, and they were. I know they were, they were definitely a lot of fun. But I, I uh, again, at two, th- you know, Pork Fest 2016, I got to hang out with him, him there too. And that was that was awesome. I, when he, when he had his this has been several years ago, but Derek J's victimless crime spree. Oh yes, yeah. his, his little his little movie he and put he together. He asked me something about that, and and I felt kind of bad afterward. But I I just told him I said it was hilarious comedy uh, from the beginning to the end, and and I think his he I mean he could see that, but this was sort of pretty t- bad for him when it happened to him and the cops harassing him so much and and uh you know arresting him but if he just watched it listen to it it was just com- so completely absurd <laughs> what they were doing to him that oh it, yeah it had to be a comedy and i said i i i i sorry to say it but i was amused more than anything else because it was so insane and crazy and it was it was a the best uh, tiny, almost no budget movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm sure they spent less um, less money, money making that than say what was the what was the um, what was the agorist movie? Oh, uh, along, alongside night. Yeah, that um, uh, Jane Neal Schumann. Yeah, I didn't feel as as strongly about it as uh, <laughs> as uh, M- Michael, who was it? M- Michael Michael J- Jim Jesus. Yeah, and myself, yeah, and myself. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah <laughs> the three yeah. of us, the, the three of us ragged on Jim, Jim was doing, really hard doing whole shows, uh, three part. Uh, oh, whole shows. Or Jim, yeah, it Jim, was, Jim, it was Jim, a decent Jim, movie. Jim, uh, okay, okay. Have you ever watched Jim Jesus's three-part um, YouTube um, dissection of that movie? No. Oh, no. oh, you need to watch oh that. Gosh. Oh my god! It is because Jim, Jim, <laughs> Jim Jesus, um, another another former fiend. Who I, I mean, luckily I still got to do the Lulberts with him, but I miss doing shows with him on the fiends because him and I, him and I did a bunch of shows on the fiends together, and I, I always had fun with Jim. Um, but he did, uh, he, I had never heard of Alongside Night before until Jim's, until the whole thing started getting talked about on The Fiends. 
and I ended up quickly getting sucked into the whole because it originally started with Michael and and Jim because Jim had gone after G, G, uh, Jay Neil Schumann, the author, and then I guess director producer whatever the whatever role he actually had on the movie making part of um that got turned into the movie alongside night he wrote the book uh back in the early 70s i guess maybe um which by all accounts i still haven't read it yet but by all accounts it was actually uh you know a good lib- you know as far as like libertarian agriculture it was a good book from what a lot of people said um, and it got it got a lot of good you know positive reviews from a lot of big names in the libertarian community. It, it was a good book. It, oh, you read it? Did you read I, it? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, I read it years ago. Sure. I mean, it was what, what is the word? You know, ham handed. Yeah. The book was a bit ham handed, but still, I enjoyed it. Sure. The movie was so ham handed. Yes. That I I couldn't even get past it. it you, you're there are too many head slaps, you know, when. When you're watching the the thing, oh yeah, all, all the uh, yeah, I've I mean my critique of it, and I actually it's funny because what what got me, what got me dragged into it very quickly is after Jim uh, Jim Jesus kept her, kept bugging me that I should watch this movie, um, I decided all right, fine, I because because uh, he kept he kept saying it was a bad movie, but I also know Jim is like famous for loving certain bad movies, like that's his thing. He looks for like the best bad movies. <laughs> And uh, so I was like, all right, you know, I, I've, I've always thought Jim was like hysterical and I've always like, you know, trusted his opinion on comedy, t- you know, stuff. So, so I'm like, all right, if you think it's like a bet, you know, the best bad movie, I'm thinking it's got to be like, you know, so bad it's funny type thing. Yeah. So I finally decided to watch it. But like for whatever reason, I ended up watching at least one or two parts of his uh, thing of it first. You know his critique of it first. So you had had to ruin it. Yeah, but then I ended up watching it, and I was like, right away, I was like, I I, I agreed with all of his critiques anyway. I'm like, oh my god, because the entire thing, my first impression of it was like, is he like literally trying to cr- cram every libertarian reference he possibly can into this movie? You know, between the 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 insane cameos. Um, for like absolutely no reason. Oh, for the stateless sweets. Yeah, and no. all. And <laughs> yeah, or you know, just like like all like all, or the just like you know the the the, the posters on the walls, the Ron Paul, um, built the the uh, you know the electronic billboard with playing the Ron Paul speech and whatever, just like every little thing. It was like. Yeah, I mean, you said she's like ham fisted. I mean, absolutely. Like, it was cramming everything in there. It was so insane. And it was so bad. And I wrote a review on Amazon. Um, I mean, obviously, I was looking to like poke uh, Shulman a little bit, but I, I wrote an honest review, like what I honestly thought of the movie. And I, I, cause I was pretty sure what would happen cause he had a, he had a penchant for attacking anybody who gave him criticism. So what did you get? He immediately said that I, he responded and immediately said that I must be lying and I was either a troll or a fed or whatever. Cause that is what he was famous for. He had accused Jim Jesus at one point of that. He accused Michael of that. Uh, well, maybe be- he heard that you were famous as a troll. <laughs> I wasn't that famous. Not then. No, not then. Okay, I think you're a master. But oh, well, go thank ahead. you. <laughs> so no, but that's the, yeah. That that was my experience with it because he, he unfortunately, again, like you said, the, I mean, you said the book is good, and, the, and as, as I said, I've heard that from plenty of people. So I'm not gonna. I'll take everybody's word for it that it was a good book. But yeah, the movie was so so bad. But Shane, yeah, if you have not seen Jim Jesus, you definitely need to look that up. Well, Shane, you you I, I don't think you agree with all this and. Somebody should say the the good points of the film. Must have some opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, the iteration of uh, Aurora from Alongside Nights. Yeah, I think it's um, the monster of a second realm. So I like that. It's a fictional example of that. How did you compare uh, Alongside Night to uh, Agora? Hashtag Agora. Um, well, once I, I, I haven't read the book, uh, alongside night, so I'm comparing book to movie here. Oh, okay. Um, obviously I'm, fa- I'm favoring hashtag Agora just because I, I, I think it was a better written story, but yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you, 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 you I, I, what are you talking about? What was the roar? Was that the mall thing or I forget? 
It's been it's been a while now since I've watched. Yeah, it was the um, the underground marketplace where you could buy nuclear weapons or guns yeah, or drugs I, or I, yeah, whatever. Again. And then there were apartments. Like people lived there. There were. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of there's a lot of stuff there. Like it was a place where people lived and partied and uh, you know bought and sold things, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I didn't think the entire thing was horrible, but even even in that, even in the Aurora, it was it was cheesy as it was cheesy it, as fuck. I'll give you that. Like there were some parts where it was like, oh my god, like that's so set up. Like you can just tell. Well, yeah, like, there, there were plenty of those parts, but and, and, and I understand. It's it was not but ex- you know, okay so 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 you you were accepting it for what that was and still finding so I I was could, just, I, I, I was, I was just happy to see like an Agoras uh, oh an no Agoras, I can see that Agoras yeah. film right you don't see a whole lot of Agoras, Agoras fiction you know movies so like I just appreciate that that's out there even if it's really cheesy and it's uh, unrealistic in a lot of in a lot of regards and et cetera et cetera no such thing as bad publicity right. <laughs> Well, you said that you were sort of mixed up in the middle of the this turmoil with with Jim Jesus and yes. Michael and you. Yes. Did you all have about the same take on it? Oh yeah, we all did. We all. I mean, Michael. Michael just trashed it constantly, obviously, and uh, and he also like he because Michael. You know, you know how Michael is when he uh, when he wants to attack somebody, he digs in as far as he can and tries to find out as much as he possibly can. Did he mention that maybe someone should have read the thirty dollar film school? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that came up at some point. But uh, well, actually, granted, granted you know, Janiel Shulman ha- is not a I don't know not a great human being. He actually uh, went on. Kyle Ridden's uh, blog, and uh, it was on uh, King Bay's uh, temporary autonomous zones, and he accused him of like a bunch of plagiarism and shit. Uh, Janiel Schulman did uh, accuse this guy of plagiarism, and uh, all sorts of other shit. So yes, but did he sue him? No, he didn't sue. Well, see, there's worse. Maybe the guy was he a plagiarist? No. Okay. Well, if Shul- if, if Schulman no, was a cla- if Schulman was accusing somebody of plagiarism and not suing him, then I'm pretty sure that he was just blowing smoke because he's also, from what I recall, extremely uh, pro IP. Oh, he's willing to use the system. Yeah, he's 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 he. Uh, yeah, as far as I recall, he's uh, he's very pro IP. So that that would make sense. Right. Um, so I'm. I'm, I can't I'm, get into I'm, that. I'm kind, I kind, of, def- kind of defending the film, but I'm not defending the man because I don't think. Well, no. I, again, like like I said, if you, if you're accepting the the cheesiness for what it is, and still like from what you were talking about, you were. It's not necessarily the the movie itself, but just like you said, the de- the, the depiction of these things that that is available for now other people to see. Yes, and write exactly. Down. Yeah. No, I totally get that. I agree with that. Um, and uh, it's it's funny, like it's you know accusing him of play, uh, him accusing anybody else of plagiarism is is pretty funny because of course one of the thing that, that one of the things that was dug up by you know between Michael and Jim Jesus was the fact that uh, Shulman had repeatedly had accounts banned from using Wikipedia because he had been caught multiple times using his original account and then subsequent accounts after that to change not only his Wikipedia page, but any web page that uh, referenced the term Agora so he could shoehorn in that his his claim, which of course cannot be proven because Sam Conkin's been died, uh, has been, Sam Conkin III has been dead for quite a while. Right. Um, but uh, J-, J. Neil Schulman's claim that he was one of uh, that he was the base, essentially the co-creator of agorism, um, which the only references Along that with are, Samuel Conkin, yeah, and the only the only references anywhere is there's like one blurb um, on something that Schulman wrote and one thing that uh, that was written in another place, both by Conkin, that referenced. Uh, the well, I've referenced the book alongside Knight, saying that uh, Shulman had managed to put the ideas of agorism into action, essentially by putting them into a book like that, but never any mention by Konkin that could be that can be proven by anybody. No, nothing in writing anywhere or you know recorded anywhere that Konkin actually said that you know Shulman helped him in any way or you know he basically said he helped further the cause. Shulman took that and ran with it and tried to change every Wikipedia page to say that he was the, essentially the co-creator of the idea of agorism. And as Shane Radliff over here has kind of proven with his Vanu podcast, um, 
it really seems that Samuel Konkin uh, actually, uh, actually took a lot of his ideas without actually giving too much credit yeah. to from Al Rayo and the ideas of Vanu, which actually came about at least a decade before yeah. uh, uh, what should we call it? Konkin uh, put the ideas of agorism forward. Well, I think Shane is uh, he is the I would say the successor of both uh, Rayo. Oh, absolutely, and and Sam Konkin, and probably the the more successful. If you stay with it, I I think that's fantastic. Uh, to to the idea, I've heard so many people at this uh, fest more so than in prior years. People saying that uh, the most important thing is for. Uh, the the values of voluntarism or anarchy or libertarianism or whatever term you want to use for the fact that we don't need the state and I don't need a cop you know to make me behave myself that um, there are there are the 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 people here seem to be saying more and more how important it is that as individuals it's not the individualist thing of don't tread on me it's the individualist responsibility that i need to live my life and behave myself as much as i can uh according to the principles of voluntarism and uh for me particularly uh the idea that uh, you don't uh, tread on your fellow man you don't do those things to him. You know, it's kind of the golden rule thing. You don't do to another person what you wouldn't want done to yourself. And I keep hearing that theme coming up over and over here this year. And uh, it dovetails perfectly with you, Shane, and the Vanu, uh, that you, you need to live your life. And it would be really nice if you had, as they say in the Free State Project, liberty in my lifetime. Uh, although you're trying to make it happen as much as you can anyway. Right. Uh, I will uh, I will live my life that way. And uh, if it happens, it happens. And if I go to my grave without uh, seeing that uh, in the wider society, I've done what I can and I'll, my conscience will be clear. Right. And I think that's really an important uh, thing to do that, that each of us has to has to know what we should do, and uh, you know I have friends that are have you know very libertarian leanings, but they tell me, Randy, it it, it can never happen. Uh, and there's this kind of alt right thing that well, it's just that people are so stupid, they're so stupid that we just can't make it happen. You know somebody's got to keep the thumb down on the on the mass of ignoramuses out there. Uh, which is to me is extremely condescending, even though, even if there are ignoramuses out there, um, to you know to declare oneself oh, on the mic, not the, not the ignoramus, but uh, <laughs> but uh, all the other people to be the ignoramuses. That makes me a little nervous to do that. But if everybody, of course, you know, started in with that attitude that I'll live my life as best I can. One thing is the the Vanu concepts of uh, of the way that you live, and then the other is the way that you treat other people. That's all anyone can do, and I I kind of like that, and uh, it all it it boils up your attitude when you you're at a down point and you don't think you're making any progress, and you have to go back and tell yourself that I am doing what I have to do. I'm doing the right thing. And I'm, you know, if I, if I, you know, die having lived that life and I don't reach the goal at that point, I still am satisfied because yeah. I've done, done the right thing. And I exactly. really like that, that attitude. You know, it took, um, it took 10,000 years for in the West for slavery to finally be recognized as a, as an evil Mm -hmm. That should not be happen to any person anywhere, anytime. It took, uh, you know, the same amount of time probably for in the West, and I'm not. I'm, I know a lot of the world is is still different in this regard, but in the West, uh, it's believed that uh, 
uh, people have a right to their own beliefs regarding religion. You know, whether it's what you would believe or not believe, and that no one should be persecuted for that when it used to get you burned or killed or persecuted, whatever it was. And all of these things have they've happened. Slavery has gone by the wayside in the West, at least legal slavery. And uh, freedom of, of opinion and belief is there. And this will come sometime. And I don't even have a problem with the idea that it'll come when its time is right. And uh, that may not be in my life. But that doesn't matter. We still have to do our part now and see if we can make it happen while we're alive. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've talked enough, but... <laughs> yeah, no. exactly. Exactly. And that's, and that's kind of the idea of Vanu is... Um, I mean, getting people out of the out of the first realm into life into lifestyles where they can, uh, you know, they 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 don't need as much money, they just so they don't have to work as much, and they have more time to think and philosophize and really try to understand the world around them. Um, because I think that's a major thing that's missing is uh, a full a full uh, I guess a, a fuller understanding, <clears throat> and also just a lack of critical thinking in general. So um, I think that's a, a really critical first step is to. Just, you know, whether it's location independent jobs or whatever, just getting people out of that normal nine to five lifestyle, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Got, I'm going to uh, jump in. This oh, yeah. Is Nick Hazleton. I just, I'm, I'm joining in. Yeah, no, I, I, want, I, want, I was going to introduce you, but go, yeah, we, we're joined by Nick Hazleton well, now. Well, go ahead and the, introduce him. The, 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 the <laughs> well, I was going to say the former anarcho yakulus because he's pot, pot faded about five million times. He retired from the fiends on us. But, uh, yes, we've, we've had Nick on the show before. Nick, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you. I'm, uh, I liked what you said about that, that getting people away from nine to five jobs. Talk into the mic, son. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it's been a while since you've been on the show. Bad audio is a hate crime. That's thank right. you, thank you, Randy. You know, I, and I don't quote Michael on that many things. <laughs> but I'm hey, with listen, him, I with built him all out. I built the bad audio as a hate crime thing. So I just you you did build that through <laughs> your bad audio, yes. uh, <laughs> which is in the past. Very yeah. much so. So sorry, go ahead. Nick. As long as Nick stays up close to the mic. Yes, yeah, as long as I stay up close yes, to the okay. mic and say, um, I, I think it is really important for for folks to like, I, I don't know I don't want to shit on nine to five jobs because a lot of people do it well and they and they make it work but man I, I really think that a big issue with anything and a lot of like a lot of issues in our in our world is because people work too much and they don't really have the energy after work to to do some of the things that might benefit their Amen. lives towards a freedom oriented way like uh, I think that um, I got I, I, like starting a podcast. Like it's hard. Like I'm I'm lucky to have like a weird job where I control my hours, um, and that's really nice. And I think that that provides me a lot of freedom that other people don't have to be able to um, to do things like I'm doing, like gardening or, or you know self reliance sort of things, or or just bettering their lives because those nine to five jobs can be brutal. You know they can be just the worst thing for some people and I understand that so I, I think it's I think they'd be I'd like to find a way for well I, I shouldn't say that. I found my way to get out of it but I think that everybody should try to find a way to become more independent from uh, that kind of work schedule like because it's I don't think it's good for people I think a lot of people are stressed out and uh, and don't like doing it so I think it is like it, it's definitely a I think it's a barrier to some of the stuff that we're trying to get done. Nobody like bring likes more doing it. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Nobody does. Well, I don't know. Those those people those people in public school who actually did really well because they were the goody two-shoes, I don't know. Some, sometimes I really believe that those people actually like that type of stuff, but... Well, it's. It, I, I love what you said there, Nick, and it's actually it's funny because we were talking about that earlier um, and on the last show we recorded, too, that it, it seems that there's at least from my perspective and a couple other people have brought it up too that it really seems that a lot more people at least in our community and even even some outside of our community are starting to focus more on that whole individual freedom type thing mm -hmm. regard even regardless of their ideology because as we've talked about with shane before you know when it comes to this whole vanu lifestyle there's a lot of people that uh you know shane and shane and even i have come across that are doing this type of thing who have never heard the term vanu and don't realize that and yeah. 
uh, you know what 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 you know that that what Shane is talking about is connected to what they're doing, but they come from all different types of ideologies. So it's not even a matter of them agreeing with us necessarily. There are more and more people that are starting to get more focused on the whole individual freedom thing, and uh, I mean. I think it can only be a positive for uh, for for the causes of you know what like people with us would uh, strive for. I mean, I know me especially. Right. I'm pretty sure I, I think you guys are on board with a lot of stuff that I that I think too. So, you know, I I, I think it's great, and uh, I, I love the like I said, I love the fact you brought it up, Nick, because it, it, we keep hearing that it's been, it's been a really big theme. Uh, it's lately, especially for me, but even more so here. I've I've heard it so many times. I mean, we talked to we talked about Luis Fernando Mises earlier, and uh, the fact that he was focusing on that. I had a couple of conversations with him nice. about that while I was here. Uh, a couple of the conversations Drew and I, Drew Sample and I had were about that too, and I, I just keep coming across it. Yeah, yeah. Say, Nick. Nick uh, not to change the subject, but. I got a, I got some of Nick's uh, yak jerky. Oh, nice. I still have and, not received my jerky, you know. Oh my god! Dude, I'm still sorry. waiting for that. Sorry. I've been, a, we, we <laughs> been yelled, on my waiting list. I but think Jeremy's I, been on my list for. I've been asking you for years. <laughs> well, after I got it though, I started looking on it for like some sort of FDA approval oh, uh, thing. And I didn't see anything <laughs> oh, on there, and I'm, you know, begin. I haven't you. eaten any of it yet because I was going to take it home and let my wife try it too. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was kind of getting cold feet. And, <laughs> well, maybe she let uh, her try it first. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there, there's nothing like that going on. Yeah, I don't have uh, this. This is a uh, non-documented jerky. Okay. Um, well, your name's not on it, so if my house gets raided, <laughs> that's right. You're probably not in trouble, not unless, of course, anything. somebody listened to this podcast and then they could connect us up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Nick. Nick lives in Oregon. For me, didn't know. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, listen, all you have to do, Randy, is you have to you have to eat your piece now, and then bring your bring the other piece home in a separate bag, and then by the time this podcast comes out, make sure your wife eats it before. Then you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. I feel better. Thank you. Well, I, 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 I promise my know. jerky is safe. I've been eating it all week <laughs> and uh, I'm not. And sick. he hasn't died yet. Yeah, I'm not. You dead haven't been yet. eating loose food? I, I ate it too. Oh, I, I have, but it was I've good stuff. Good. I've been eating jerky. Yeah, you've had any? a different batch. Yeah. Did you get to have this batch, though? No. That's All right. This this batch is, I think, <laughs> I think it's better than this. I, I sent all of my patrons. Uh, a bunch of jerky and uh, yeah Shane brought that up yeah, earlier Shane and I got very me. mad I'm like wait a minute the patrons got it I've been asking before, it. before the guy even had a Patreon page what the hell's going on here there's actually so many people that have offered to pay me that I've I was one of them <laughs> they wait a minute like, valuable. I, I did pay you yeah you had to pay me but I <laughs> <laughs> this is just getting worse by the minute Nick's just thinking of something deeper and deeper you should get some free uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Jeremy what I have I have yet to get any <laughs> um, it's so. Here's the thing, guys. It's it is hard to make jerky in in the way like it's not hard to do, but it's hard for me to give up that meat because then um, I think how hard it is for the yak. <laughs> 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 It's really hard for me. Hard for me to make that jerky, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. I apologize. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No worries. I was just Nick crying over there. As Shane's gotten into a coughing fit. That's because, you know, I I thought, I I thought when I was going to get. My my yak jerky from Nick. That it, I wanted to see what the name of the yak was. Um, oh yeah, that's Sherman. And, <laughs> <laughs> no wait, sorry. This is no. This is Sherman. Yeah. These this, wax and they, these yaks yeah. have names, don't they? Well, this one had a name. The it, it was either Sherman or Big Boy is what I called him. I yeah, usually, yeah. I yeah. know you have name. My wife uh, grew up on a farm, and and she disclosed to me that all of the cows had had names, and that was you know Blackie and. Spot and all of that, and and when that cow got butchered, you know they knew that they were having blackie tonight. Mm -hmm. And I figured that you probably knew your yaks, and I was kind of curious about Sh mm. Sherman. I'll keep I, Sherman in mind. Yeah, he Say he a was a, for him. He was a bull <laughs> that I bought in in Tumalo, Oregon. <laughs> From I probably shouldn't say their name, uh, but uh, from from some cool folks, and uh, he was a big bull. 
And he seemed he made some really good roasts. Ah, big but he was, he was a little bit mean. Oh, I want I, boy, that'll be I, I I want some of that that meanness to rub off <laughs> that jerky Sherman. But I, I made that jerky um, in, a, in a dehydrator and I put it on at the lowest setting, so it's not cooked. Um, oh. I don't remember if I said that, but it, it's but it's safe. So when I eat it, it'll be bleeding. Well, it won't. There's no Bloody blood jerky. In it. All right, <laughs> it's not gonna have any blood in it. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> but it'll be it'll be that kind of like that texture that um, yeah, you know, like store bought jerkies. It falls apart a little bit more because um, they're using like nice steak cuts or some shit or chemicals or whatever. I don't know what they're doing, but um, you know how soft it is. You mean yak jerky from the stores? No, like beef jerky. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how like it's really soft if you get it at a gas station or something. It's not like. Most um, of the time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, It's not very dry. But if you make jerky on your own, most people do it really dry because they're trying to, like, cook it. Well, mine was kind of, it's got a little squishy to it. Right, yeah, okay. it's got some give to it. So it's not going to be as fall apart, but it's going to be as chewy that way. Chewy. You have oh. a do you have a website or something where people can get some yak jerky sh- shipped to them? <laughs> you can, I don't. So you can here's sell thing, a shit guys, ton of that, I, man. No, I set I it up, set up the store because I don't have a a licensed um, or commercial dehydrator or or kitchen, so I can sell it to. You know, I can, I don't. So here's the, I shouldn't even be saying this is illegal. Oh, just, oh like, no! This is that, because Where are the we're, all, we're all friends here, and right. nobody's here. This go ahead. But, Nobody but I'm, this I'm not afraid okay. to sell jerky to like friends, like and, and people that I know aren't gonna call the FDA on me. How do you know? <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, 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 I used to be a lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you might like, turn me in right, right to the Oregon Department of Ag. I don't know. Is there a reward? I, you know, I have a hard up for cash at the moment. Yeah, so. I, just, I think there's a reward. Yeah, there's no this. price on your. No, your it's just, I would have to pay a fine. And, uh, uh, but, but uh, then you just raise your price. To, so don't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it's economics. I gotta. I gotta. How much do it. I have to order to get free shipping? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a yeah. whole so, yak's worth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be interesting. At least three. At least three. Yak. At least three quarters of a Sherman. <laughs> yeah, <three quarters. laughs> is that a measure? measure <laughs> it is a now. Yak measurement. <laughs> yeah. That's that would be the size of an average yak. When Sherman was a big boy, wasn't he? Yeah, he was pretty big. Yeah. He was. So he saying. was. I think he was above average for a bull. He was mean. He was mean. Yeah, he was just a little bit on me. Like he never got after me, but he, you know, bulls they get when they're when they're telling you they don't really respect you. They they give you the broadside. You know, they show you their whole length of their body and and kind of puff out and get big. And that's how they become jerky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I don't like that. And uh, I don't I don't let bulls do that to me most of the time. Sherman, sorry now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll teach that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I was... are, are we allowed to cuss? Oh yeah, we can, we can absolutely oh, cuss. Okay. This is not the fiends. Oh, okay. Okay. Even, even, even though we have, even yeah. though technically every one of us at least at one time was a fiend. Uh, hey, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Since so Shane Beale dis, well Shane Beale was too, but he disappeared, never came back. I don't know what happened to him. Is that him? No. I hope that, he's all is right. Is that Joe? Oh, damn. oh, Joe's here. Okay. How's it going? I'm sorry, Hi, Joe. We're on a podcast. Nobody knows. Nobody That's can all right. Hear we're, Joe right now. Yeah. Joe Mutard. Let's That's, hear it. We, we, we've, we've mentioned Joe a few times. He's been on our show before. Yay, Joe! Hello. How how how'd the break job, Joe, go? You know, it was actually a bit of a it was actually a bit of a rough one. Um, he ended up needing new calipers and whatnot, which, you know. In my garage at home, it, it's not that damn bad, but um, sitting in the middle of a campground, campground <laughs> without all the proper tools, it, it puts a couple wrinkles into it. But um, I just took it for a test drive. He's, he's ready to rock. All right. Joe saves the day. He fixed Brett's car. I like fixing things. Well, that's good, Joe. New calipers, new, calipers, new pads, new rotors. Yeah. Wow. Look at this. Uh, see, we, we, we've been talking up the MPL Fest this entire time. And look at the service you get. If you're one of the keynote speakers, not only will they help you uh, get out here and possibly put you up for the night, they'll fix your car, too. <laughs> I used to run a bike shop. I fix bikes, too. 
Well, it's good to know. So look at that for next year for the MPL Fest. If anybody's thinking about coming out and, uh, you know, you, your car may be, you know, a little iffy. Don't worry about it. As long as you can make it here, Joe will make sure you get home. <laughs> you know, it, it's a funny, but I... People think it's a big. People think it's a big burden, but the honest truth is, I um, I work in an office for a living. You know, I sit in a chair. I mean, I do a lot of problem solving stuff, but I actually like when things break and I get to fix them. It's it's very satisfying for me. I that's, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's a it's a puzzle. It's a I, I can take something and I can with concrete evidence know that I made it better. Like I made a positive impact on this thing, and especially a car. You know, uh, this is this is a person's horse. This is their freedom. This is how they get around without you know freely. This is how they can travel. So I love cars. I always have. My dad is a mechanic. Been working on it my whole life. Um, and um, yeah, whenever I get the chance, I like to make it happen. Oh yeah! Well, you definitely made it happen here, so and I'm sure Brett is thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That one was a bit of a bitch. <laughs> well, you got it done, and uh, considering it's been dark for a couple hours, and we're just seeing you now. That's uh, I, I guess I guess you worked until you couldn't see anymore. So Good I did you, have the company of uh, a couple other folks, uh, and and who were supplying with beer. The entire yeah. Oh well, so. you know what? That that's very important. So mm-hmm. I have been drinking. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know what? The, I'm, I'm sure that does what helped you get it done. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't very well turn a wrench without a beer in the other hand. Yeah, this is true. Cheers, yeah. Internal combustion engines require lubricant, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Well, thank, thank you for saving the day, Joe. We appreciate that. Well, thank you for having me on your podcast. Oh, this of, was co- a of course. Surprise and thrill. Well, yes, man. Why did, why did you come over here, though? I was just looking to see where everybody was at. Um, you know, there's some key players not not around the fire pit, and I was uh, wondering because you know this is our last night, so I was looking to share in the company of everybody. Oh yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy is a key player. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's talking about you, Randy. <laughs> no, no, it was everybody but Jeremy. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's all right. That's fair. I understand. <laughs> Jeremy's Jeremy's the only one that knows how to operate the equipment here. Yeah. So, in this very narrow context, he's important, man. <laughs> I, I, well, if, I was going to say, for a campsite, this does look like uh, quite the uh, elaborate setup. And after all, bad audio is a hate crime. This is true. Well, you know, it, when, you, when, you live in, when you live in your vehicle, it's uh, quite easy to, you know, make sure you have all, all, everything you need with you. So, I took what I needed. I need this. <laughs> yes. Every homeless person needs a complete mobile podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just imagine. Just, ima- just imagine how much richer the podcast Fuck community could be. I want to be able if, to record uh, my thoughts. If, and if the crazy guy the down at the corner who licks windows had this type of equipment, you know, how much, you know, how, you, how, many, da- how many downloads do you think that motherfucker would get? Actually, even, actually, even don't answer that question because it's probably more much. than us and I would actually probably be, be depressed then. Oh. But no, in all honesty, um, I I just want to again extend my thanks to everybody that came, everybody that participated, everybody that spoke. Um, and, and one of the most beautiful things about this place, and I, I've said it a bunch of times, but whenever there's a problem that pops up, you get more hands raised to actually fix a problem than can possibly even participate. Uh, it's it is truly an example of spontaneous order, and and I, I love it here. I love it. Yeah, we we know that when somebody asks for help, that we can volunteer and not actually have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> because so many people, Randy, stop <laughs> letting our secret out, man! Come on, jump in to to help, and you can kind of hang back and but be cool. Yes, you're still kind of one of, among one of the greats because you actually stood up and said, "Yes, I'll do it." Oh, you, there's too many. Oh, too bad. <laughs> next time, I'll get it next time. <sighs> anyway, well, yes, Joe. Well, th- thank you for all you do to make uh, help help make this uh, wonderful event. Because uh, I mean, we've talked about it this this entire two episodes we've recorded tonight. Uh, how much fun we've had here, and uh, you know, I said it before. Uh, as I have the past two years, now for the third year in a row, on the last night, I have already started contemplating how to get out here next year. So. 
I can't, I, I can't wait. Although we, we've also all discussed, uh, I think this might have been our, this might have been my favorite one so far out of the last three years. Uh, I think this was the best one. So uh, hopefully next year, even better. Yeah, I hope so. Will you, will you be in charge, Joe? I'm 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 not in charge. <laughs> the only thing I do is I bring in speakers. Um, you know everything that happens here. There's a whole lot of other people besides me doing a shitload of work. Um, but how many? Okay, Joe. I listen, and I love everybody else and uh, and all the other members of the committee and everybody helps. But how many? Uh, how many of the other committee members are doing a break job? On Sunday night. <laughs> well, it, okay, that happens to be something in my wheelhouse. But, uh, you know, Miriam Zachariah showed up um, when nobody else was here. She was the only committee member on site for, for like a, a, this a, is true. a day. I mean, Lou was here, but he was setting up his kitchen. So she was running the whole show for a while, not to mention that she was an amazing treasure. Um, I mean, Shannon was our, our, our chair, uh, you know, Bruce Weber also did a lot with our website. Uh, he was so ill that he unfortunately couldn't even attend. So all of his, but all of that work, it, it goes unseen, un, unnoticed. And, um, I just happen to be the guy on the stage with a microphone. So <laughs> everyone points at me, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a cog in the wheel, man. I, I'm, I'm only a small part of a very, very good team. Um, now, this is my second year being one of the, the committee members, being a planner, but I'm actually thinking that next year I probably want to try being a guest again so I can kind of chill a little more. Um, now, that being said, obviously, um, I'll be here. I'll be a consultant and everything, helping out whoever is doing it, but we will certainly look for, for new talent on our committee, and we have plenty of people who have been around for a long time. Um, my God, Shane... You and, and Jason Paradise, um, you made our speakers happen. I mean, with, with your, your know-how and your equipment and, and your experience, like all of those presentations could not have been possible without you guys, especially with me running around all the time. Right. We appreciate yeah. that. Well, yeah, yeah. All right. So Shane and Jason are running things next year. Awesome. All right. This is going to be a hell of a party. I can't wait. <laughs> yes, we need more central planners. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Joe. I appreciate you stopping by. And, and regardless if you're going to uh, be humble or not, we do appreciate your service. So thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Uh, appreciate yes, it. Uh, May the force be with you. Yes. And you as well, <laughs> sir. All right. Well, uh, oh, look at that. Shane Buell has finally returned. He disappeared. Last, we tried to record a show the other day. He falls asleep. This time we recorded a show, and he just gets up and walks away. Isn't Shane one of the one of the actual? <laughs> yes, he is. Of this show? He is my other host. What the hell is he doing? Over I there? don't know. Shane, where are you going? Now he's leaving he again. <laughs> We're about to close the show out. And he's just disappearing. I mean, well. We've got we've got several volunteers here, you know, former and present freedom fiends coming yeah. to bail his. Yeah, we yeah we should just you know what screw this we're just gonna make this a freedom feature. Oh, I think we curse too much. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> no wait a minute. Did, did would Michael did anybody here? Was anybody cussing on in here? Anything? <laughs> I haven't changed. I, I I can't afford to start cussing. You know, somebody <laughs> saying, "Well, this is a podcast, and you can cuss." Hey, I learned and, to do it, and, Randy. And, I, still cur I cuss like a sailor on my shows, but I somehow I still manage to keep myself you know, clean on the You do themes. this more than I do. This I, is I true. I gotta keep keep my mind. I do it more there. than I just everybody. Can't be sitting here and going shit. shit <laughs> as, as you know. <laughs> I've got to. I've got to keep it keep it clean because <laughs> this is this is for. Free and Fiend is a family show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, we're all about This you. is not the Freedom Fiends. So, no, so. no, this is not. Oh. It's like Wheel of Fortune. You guys have corrupted How many kids this. do you think listen to the Freedom Fiends? I don't, well, I don't know. You were one of them. Yeah, I don't right, know. How right. many more of you think are there out there, Nick? There was like, there was one, there was one other, there were like two other kids that were younger than me, right? There was a uh, Knight. Well, not, see, I don't know if Knight really counts because he's Nima's brother. So, oh, okay. I mean. And, I and then. Show, I do shows with Knight. There was another kid who who was in the groups. I don't His remember. His name was Alex, but I don't remember. Okay, Shane, you're trying to get credit for standing here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shane comes back. He doesn't. He doesn't have a microphone. He's not doing his job Does yet. Disappear for more than half the show. I may have to reevaluate my my my, my, my choice in co-host. I don't know. But but he he's standing here, <laughs> lending. 
things to take care of. Lending the moral support. At least, at least he came and, back. Uh, you and know. I came back while I was still on the phone, and I had to go say goodbye. Oh, please. Yes. Anyway. All right. Well, we've been running for quite, we've been running for quite a while now, so we should probably start. We should probably shut this one down. I mean, we could always record another one if people are up to it. <laughs> um, but but uh, first of all, I mean, thank you uh, for everybody who joined us before at this point. I even forget who it was. Well, was CJ stopped by. Uh, oh yeah, Phoenix popped on earlier. Oh, yeah, I forgot again. all about that. And uh, you, you forgot about it's CJ. Been a while. He wasn't that long ago. But uh, and Randy and Nick who are still here. Thank you both uh, for joining us tonight. This was uh, this was great. Thanks, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, doing this. This. It's always fun to do a live show. I mean, the last time I got to do this was uh, Porkfest 2016, uh, where we got to do a bunch of live shows together for the Fiends. And uh, it's always so much more fun to be sitting around talking to one another. I mean, I know the audio is going to be a little off. Um, some people have a problem staying on the mic, um, but that's all right. It's, uh, Who are you referring to? I, I, I can't imagine. I just, just, a, just a general comment. Nick still, he, he, I, he fades away a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, you know. He, he may fade away, but at least he doesn't he get up and walk away or fall asleep like my co-host <laughs> Shane over there. Uh, <laughs> you awake, Shane? But anyway... Uh, uh, thank you, thank you guys for joining us. This has been great, um, and uh, thank. Uh, well, it's been it's been great hanging out with you again. So uh, I'm so glad that we are all together at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, and hopefully all of us will be back next year. So uh, uh, with that, we will close out the show. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. SOL, that stands for shit out of luck or what? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good night. t-shirt from across the room that's pretty cool thanks i looked all over for t-shirts with designs and sayings that define my unique taste and i finally found it who makes them wormshirts.com wormshirts.com yeah wormshirts.com that's weird why'd they call it wormshirts.com probably because wormshirts.com is easy to remember worm like the critter that crawls on the ground and shirts like what they are t-shirts wormshirts.com Cool. Do they make them for women? Yeah, they have men's, women's, and children's styles, a bunch of colors, and all sizes, and they're quality cotton shirts. I'll look up warmshirts.com right now on my phone and check it out. Wow, they have lots of designs. I've never seen any shirts like these. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Hey, let's get out of here. We'll go over to my place and I'll order some shirts on warmshirts.com. Then when they arrive, I'll try them on for you. Worms! That's wormshirts.com.